of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Barry Sullivan, Jeffrey Jewell, Greg Mulaby. Tonight's episode, Deadline. I thought you were out of town. I lied. Why? Well, the reason's pretty obvious, isn't it, Maggie? Who is he? You've been drinking. I had good reason. Who is he? I was going to tell you about him. Tell me. This. I'm always like this about you. Tell me. Please, not now. Now. Where has all the gentle gone? Chris! You set the ground rules, Chris. Remember? No ring, no long runs. <laughs> Maggie, I didn't mean to do that, I swear, Maggie. Maggie. Maggie! body is that of an adult Caucasian female weighing approximately 120 pounds, measuring 65 and one half inches. The hair is blonde, the eyes are blue, the ears, nose, and mouth are essentially unremarkable, except for a 
Small unrepaired cavity in the left incisor. Has to be another way for the day to begin. There is edema of the occipital region and a depressed fracture measuring approximately five centimeters of greatest diameter. It is my opinion that the wound of the skull produced such extensive brain damage as to preclude the possibility of the deceased surviving the injury. Time lapse since death, conceding the cooling rate of the body to be approximately one degree per hour, and uh, taking into account surrounding temperature and moisture, 12 hours. She was dead before she hit the water. But how long in the bay? Well, the tidal currents flow about six hours in one direction and about uh, the same in the opposite direction. Now, what time do you say she was found? Just before six this morning. And right about here? Yes, mm -hmm. there. Uh, the currents are running seaward, then. If the body hadn't been recovered when it was, she'd have gone right through the gate. Well, if she was dumped from a boat, where would it have been, Captain? Can you make a guess? Well, I can do better than that. Now, here's a chart prepared by the hydrographic offices of the U.S. government. It graphs the surface conditions of the waters here. Now, found when she was in these latitudes, she had to be drifting seaward on the outgoing tide. Now, the span of time measured by the speed of the water and the wind currents would indicate that she had to be right about there. That's land. That's right. Belvedere. Well, I'll get right on it. Wild, huh? Isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. Man comes night, you know what you can do? You can freak out in the stars. It's really glorious. Not the moon, though. They're, they're, they're polluting the moon, you know? But yesterday you weren't looking at anything, huh? No, just leather. I mean, it's my life's work. I, I neglect it. I'm a hungry child. Yeah. You ever seen her? That's a lot of girl. Yeah. No, I never saw her, not until just this minute. Why, who is she? Maggie Ames. Oh. oh what is it, a missing person or something? Dead, she's dead. Uh oh. Oh, wow. That's a lost child, you know? Hey, I'm, I'm sorry I can't help you out unless, uh... Unless you could use some custom-made shoes or something <laughs> like that. You guys use a lot of shoe leather. No, don't I don't think so. Thank you, anyway. It couldn't hurt. I'll do it cheap. Yeah. Maybe another time. Maggie was an exciting, vibrant girl. Cliché or no, she lit up the place where she was. Maggie did a column for us, profiles in depth on the illustrious, the anonymous. Well, what was the last thing she wrote? A piece on uh, ACT, the theater group. She picked her own assignments, uh, did what interested her. Well, what would interest her about a theater group? Creativity. Creativity interested her. She spent more time on that column than she had on all the others. Do you know why? No. No, I don't. Maggie placed a high value on her privacy. Not many people dare to intrude upon that. How did she live, Mr. Martin? I mean, habits, friends, lifestyle. Did she live alone with someone? Oh. Alone, I assume. I never asked her, and we never discussed it. I didn't know her friends. I certainly have no idea why anyone would want to kill her. Tomorrow's news is screaming for attention, Mr. Stone. Today's is a whisper from the dead and the buried. Mr. Martin, thank you for your time. Well, isn't there somebody there I can talk to about it? I just want to find out when the rehearsal starts. All right, I'll wait. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh-huh. What is it? Four o'clock. And what's the name again? William Ball. Thank you very much. No. No messages. 
Belvedere. What? Happened in Belvedere. How do you come by that? They found her in the bay, didn't they? She had a beach house over there. And what else do you know? Oh, wait a second. You're supposed to be the homicide anyway. You give me the facts, remember? I just put them on paper. How well did you know her, Ace? She put out a column, I put out a column. That's all. Give or take an occasional lunch offer from an old man she was too busy for. How about this uh, beach house? Oh, it's at the foot of the hills, right on the water. She told you about it? No, a gal at the office owned it. Rented it to Maggie when she moved to Arizona. 412 Bay Views. Hey, thanks, Ace. Nothing in life is free, Mike. Oh, I thought we touched that base before. Remember, no exclusives. Just a promise? Yeah. Get him. That almost sounds more personal than just a lunch date or two not taken up on. I take it personally every time a Maggie Ames gets chopped down. Mike, how much good is there left in this world, and how many people are there trying to help what little there is left? You pull Maggie's columns, any one of them, see how she looked at life, at people. Everything she wrote had a smile. Blue skies and white caps, summer storms and rainbows, snowflakes and holly. I had killed her, scrubbed all that. In one stupid, mindless, self-centered moment, he took something rare and left it like that. Well, it's still just an investigation, Ace. Nothing says murder. 28 years on the desk says murder to me, Mike. And if you can't prove it, I will. something? Yeah, it looks like an errand list or something. Market, laundry, drugstore, gas station. Sounds pretty flimsy. What did you come up with? Look, the next time a Marin County Sheriff tells us we won't find anything, I'm gonna believe that man. <laughs> this house has got the worst vibes, you know? So cold, so impersonal. Maybe she lit it up. Like her editor said, she lit up the room wherever she was. Hello? What have you got? Chris? Press pass by, you insult rights. It buys more than your badge, it seems. Like? Like two kids in a skiff yesterday evening off Belvedere. You telling me somebody saw what happened? Same as. They saw a speedboat heading into the beach with a boy and a girl. A blonde girl. A few minutes later, they saw the same boat blasting back across the bay without the girl. Did you get a description of the guy? My two 16, 17-year-old red-blooded American boys. They can describe the girl. They can describe the boat. The girl was Maggie. Boat was a 20, 22 foot custom inboard. White with blue lightning bolts down each side of the bow. Thanks, Ace. Mike, we get that boat, we get the killer. I'm checking marinas now. We? OK, OK, I'll do it myself. You go back to shaking doorknobs. Chris. Crazy ink fingered fireball. What's happened? Well, he may have broken the case wide open. Well, what are we looking for? Lightning bolts. Lightning bolts? Yes, of course, I know it well. Pot of red. Privilege to birth her. Well, I'm glad to hear it. This is the eighth yacht harbor we've been to today. Who owns her? Young fellow named Roland Claridge. You know, we took it out yesterday. I'm Mr. Knight and you. Members here use their vessels at their own whim and will. Well, do you happen to know whether he had the whim yesterday? No, sir, I do not. That is an intrusion we cannot condone. 
But this must be the boat you described to me. The only one of its kind on the bay, to my knowledge. Little thoroughbred. Well, we may have to keep this thoroughbred in the barn for a while. I beg your pardon? Impound, police impound. Impound? Yes, sir. Well, the other chap never mentioned that. Other chap? Yes. Before you, asking the same questions. Newspaper fellow. Chris Bain. I was about to tell you his name. Chris Bain. He writes a newspaper column, Deadline. Deadline. Maybe we're going to have to start reading that column. Yes, Lieutenant. We've been expecting you. He said that you'd be along shortly. Hmm? Uh, that wouldn't by any chance be a gentleman named Chris Bain? Scarcely a gentleman. His interrogation of my son was indefensible. I had him shown out. Score one for our side. I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing, Mrs. Claridge. I take it then you know why we're here. Oh, I should have sold that boat years ago. Cost a fortune. Roland uses it semi-annually. Oh, this is my son, Roland. <laughs> Lieutenant Stone. I'm Inspector I... Keller. Uh, did you by any chance use the boat yesterday, Mr. Claridge? No, he was not using his boat yesterday. Where were you between 4.30 and 5 o'clock? He was here at home with me. Can anyone else attest to that, like Roland here, for instance? How about it, Roland? I was at home yesterday. Your boat was out. Yeah, but I wasn't operating it. Well, do you know who was? Do I have to answer that? Certainly not. You don't have to answer anything. Just that I'd rather not involve anybody else until I understand exactly what this is all about. Well, I'm sure that Chris Bain must have told you. Yeah. He said murder. Who is this somebody else that you're worried about? I can't believe he'd do a thing like that. Well, then he won't be afraid to answer a few questions, will he? His name is Peter. Peter Anthony. He was using it yesterday. All day. Where can we find him? No. I have no idea where he lives. But, Roland, how, how do you know anybody, anybody like that? We study together. You go to school? My son studies theater at the ACT workshop. as false as water. Devil. She was a liar gone to burning hell. Devil. Very good, very good. John, allow the tension to build just a little bit longer before you pull the trigger. And we'll take a ten minute break and then we'll start from the top of the scene. Uh, he's really good, your fellow. <laughs> you recognized it. Sure, sure, I liked it. What part does Peter Anthony play? Cassio. When does he come on? I don't rehearse with him again till tomorrow. Tomorrow? You happen to know where we can find him today? Afraid not. Well, what about your office? Would they have his phone number or address? Well, not for Peter. Well, why is that? Well, personal reasons. His parents objected pretty strongly to his becoming an actor. It's a pity, too, because he's very gifted and he could use their support. Well, what time's the rehearsal tomorrow? I'm working with Desdemona until 11, and I'll begin with Peter then. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's one more thing, please, Mr. Ball. There's a young woman reporter working on a column about your theater, Maggie Ames. Oh, I uh, heard about her death. Is that what you're investigating? Uh, yes, yes. We were wondering if she focused her interviews on anyone in particular. Well... Peter Anthony? Peter? Oh, if you're assuming that Peter had anything to do with that young woman's death, <laughs> that's pretty poor casting. Peter is very sensitive, but uh, he's also very self-controlled. He's well-focused, clear-headed. I guess you could say the same thing about Othello. Couldn't you, Mr. Bowman? Checking the box score? Yeah, if Chris knows anything about this Anthony kid, 
That'll make it a shutout, won't it? Yeah. Holding fingers through the fuzz zip. But it's kind of tough to get a jump on this guy. Yeah, he always was that way. Well, how long have you really known him? Oh, we go back a long way. Way back. Yeah, my first day in homicide, my first case. Me and old McIntyre, we were... You remember Matt? No, it was before your time. Well, uh, we got out there like a shot. And there was this reject from a college paper walking all over the clues. So what did you do? Same thing I've had to do a hundred times since. Tell them to keep out of the way. But no matter where you turn around, why, you'd always trip over them. Well, man, traffic jam, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he turned out to be a good reporter, though. Many times he'd come up with leads that, well, the whole department couldn't find. So they would be a great cop. Except for one thing. A small item about drinking on duty. No problem? No. He just drinks as hard as he works. Listen, is there anything in this column about the case? No, he's taking on legalized gambling today. That's funny. What? Well, he's just so involved. You think he'd have something about the case? Well, he may have written it before. It may be one of a series, and it's got to continue. Come on, let's get back to the office. I want to find out what they know about Peter Anthony. <laughs> Son, how long you been here? I got here a little while ago. Uh, making coffee. You want some? Uh, I think I could use it. Yeah, 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 coffee. That's a great idea. Fine. Uh, you've been working on that Maggie Ames story. Yeah. How is your work going? Uh, nothing's changed. I don't think it's about to either, Dad. Yeah, uh, you hang in there, Greg. Aerospace is important. Laces, galaxies, black holes. We've talked about all that before, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. We've been through it. Hey, man, that coffee smells good. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> uh, you know, I haven't seen you for days, and I treat you like wallpaper. How are you? How have you been? What have you been doing with yourself? You need a buck? You need some uh, fatherly advice from an absentee father? Something like that. I tried to see you at the paper, but you'd gone. OK, Greg, shoot. What's on your mind? It's all right. You look beat. We'll make it some other time. Now, Greg. Greg, don't go. You've got to get some sleep, Dad. I need... What, Dad? What we all need, I guess, Greg. Someone you can cut your heart open to. Our tired old hearts. Oh, come on. You've got the heart of a lion. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Old oh, lion-hearted, king of the jungle. King of the jungle with a pride of lionesses to... No, no, not a pride, just one. Sleek, lithe, young, with a glow about it that set men's hearts aglow. I don't follow you, Dad. Are you seeing somebody special now? No. Not anymore. Not ever again. Why not? He's dead. Dead? Killed. Who was she, Dad? Hmm. That girl you asked about a few minutes ago, Maggie Ames. I... I didn't know. Oh, Greg, not too many people did. I made a keep it that way. I didn't want her to be laughed at. I didn't want people saying what they could if they knew she was seeing a man old enough to be a father. It didn't matter how many times she told me. The only thing that mattered was my love. I, oh, I pretended to believe her, but I knew better. I knew the day would come when she'd be able to see what anyone could see. That day finally came. She was killed. Yeah. Yeah, she was killed. And I'm gonna find the man who took her away from me, the man who made love to her, the man who made her die. I'm 
couldn't find him. I see, right. So that if he actually hadn't been paid for performance, you wouldn't have to join your guild, is that right? Right. Okay, well, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Right. What does he get from the Actors Guild? Nothing, just that he's a student, doesn't have to join the guild unless he gets paid. And I can't find anything like a diary or daily calendar. Same in her bedroom. Well, maybe she left her life at the office. If she had one. Judging by this, I don't know. Want to pack it in? Yeah. And you can read this on your own time. Beautiful handwriting. Yeah. Good looks. Good taste. I don't know. And everything she wrote had a smile. Identity, Revelation P.A. Day with P.A. Day.
telegraph. Yeah, sure, Mr. Bain. I'll get it right away. Hold on. I've got it right here in front of me, Mr. Bain. Maggie Ames' last column, ACT. Uh, read what it says about Peter Anthony. Among the supporting cast were Peter Anthony and Marilyn Lee, both promising newcomers. And then there's some other names. Now, that's it? That's all it says about Peter Anthony? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Are you sure you haven't skipped something? No, sir. Among the supporting cast were Peter Anthony and Marilyn Lee, both promising newcomers. The picture? The face? I, uh, I finally put it all together, Mr. Bain. And it's spelled, uh, Deadline. Who are you? Me? Oh, I'm just a dude with a telescope. On a dock. By the beach. In Belvedere. You talk to the police? Me? No, 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 no. I just wanted to wait and wrap with you, Mr. Bain, that's all. <laughs> Your lead. Yeah, you're right, right, Mr. Payne? Who was it wrote, uh, Silence is Golden? Huh? Anyhow, that's not what I'm selling. I'll tell you what I am selling. I'm selling a very special, unique, heavy brand of silence. And this brand of silence just happens to come, as you might have guessed, in, uh, Golden. Still your lead. <laughs> right. How much Golden? Let's see, uh... Say five long ones a week. How's that? No. <laughs> hey, man. Come on, hold on, man. All I have to do is pick Three. up. Three. Three hundred. Yeah? I'll only give you two right now. You'll have the other hundred by noon tomorrow. Payment date hereafter will be on Saturday. Hey, Saturday's great. That's great. Yeah, no meetings. Money will be deposited in the post office box. Tens, twenties, okay? Okay, sure. That's great. All right. Let's get on with it. Let's get it over with. I got a boy just about your age. Fine boy. He's bright. He listens. He reads. He thinks. But he has to break his behind to make it. <laughs> not at all like you, Roger. Not poised. Not cool. You've got it all together. Right. At such an early age. Well, here we are. Okay, let's get it. Come on. Roger! What? Hey, man, what is it? What is this? What is this, huh? Hey, what? What's this, Maggie Ames's print were on Claridge's boat? Yeah, and somebody else's. Who, Anthony? If that's his name. Wait a minute, what do you mean? There's no record of a Peter Anthony working anywhere in this city. No criminal record, no school record, no nothing. You did your homework last night, didn't you? An alias, huh? What else? A guy studying to be an actor? Stage name, right? Yeah. Better check the theater again. I did. He joined the group as Peter Anthony, period. That's right. Ball said he was having trouble with his parents about being an actor. And now he's in bigger trouble. Mike! I found him. I told you to read Maggie's columns. His name's Peter Anthony. It was written all over them. Hold on. Take it easy. What are you talking about? The killer, his name is Peter Anthony. Here is a work draft of the last column she wrote. Read the part I have underlined. I haven't got my glasses. Read. It's, uh, among them, Peter Anthony, a very talented, very sensitive, very attractive young man. There's a gentleness in him and the strong undercurrents of virility, a rare combination. It's quite a review. Now, here's the column that was actually printed. Come on, read it. Among the supporting cast were Peter Anthony and Marilyn Lee, both promising newcomers. That's all? Yeah. That's all. A passing reference to a guy she couldn't say enough about in the original work draft. Doesn't that ice it for you? 
Ace, how many times have you told me that newspapers have editors who cut your heart out? Nobody touched Maggie's column but her. It was written in a contract. This figure's only one way. She was in love with this fella, Peter Anthony. She was trying to hide it. Wait a minute. How do you get from a review to love? A calendar. You saw it, didn't you? No. How did you? I went to her apartment. How'd you get in? The manager. Turns out he was a fan. He reads my column before he reads the funnies every morning. Why, I thought you would have seen the entries in a calendar. Dinner with Peter Anthony. Supper. Breakfast. And the last item. March 8th. A day with P.A. March 8th. That was the day she was murdered. Told you I'd find him for you, Mike. Now you bring him in. We've been looking for him, Ace. You knew? Uh-huh. Just a suspect. Got his name from the guy who owned the boat. A suspect? If you can't make this stick, you're in the wrong line of work, both of you. Oh, come on, come on, Ace. We'll move in on him. Mike, thought you ought to know. Radio unit just called in. They found a man in an alley, dead of a bullet wound. Give it to Hasijin, will you? I think you want this one, Mike. They said he had a medallion in his hand, had a name engraved on the back. Peter Anthony. St. Genesius, at this patient seat. Torn off the assailant. How long has he been dead? Six or seven hours. I know him, Mike. He's the guy in Belvedere with the telescope. And Act Four is a coffee house. Hang out for actors. ACT's a block away. Hey, Peter. A couple of dudes out here to see you with badges. They ask for me? If you've got a stash, man, you better flush it. of murder. No, I didn't kill her. We're talking about a man shot to death in an alley. He had a medal in his hand. It was yours. Then there was the boat you used the same day Maggie Ames was killed. We'll talk about that, too, downtown. Come on. Hey, look, you don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do it. I didn't kill anyone. Why did you run, then, huh? I don't have to say anything. Tell you anything. Do I, Dad? Turns out to be your own son. So that's the way you met. That's where you that's two... That's where we met. Period. She watched the rehearsal. Then she came back... I don't want to hear any more of it. Well, you're going to hear. You're going to hear the way it was, not the way you think it was. I didn't know, Dad. I didn't know until you told me. And it tore me up. She knew, didn't she? Not at first. When she found out, did she tell you? Did she tell you? Was she the kind of person to hurt anyone that way? You were living a lie, a rotten, stinking... She lived in hell. A hell like neither one of us knew, because she wouldn't let us know. She tried to spare us that. Uh... Listen to me. What happened with us just happened. There didn't seem to be any way either one of us could control it. But then she told me it had to stop. But there was another man. Someone she loved very deeply, in a different way. Someone she didn't want to hurt. You think that's what I want to hear from you? You think that's going to make me forgive either one of you? I don't know about forgiving, but you taught me about truth. You've dedicated your whole life to it, haven't you? You can face it now. The truth is, she didn't know who I was until I told her. 
until I bragged about my father being pretty big in her field himself. Told her he was Chris Bain. And that's... That's when she got to place on the beach. So she could be alone to think. Do you realize what she had to be thinking, Dad? That had to be like... like broken glass inside her. There's another truth, Dad. I took Maggie to the island that day on the boat. But I... I didn't kill her. I know that, Greg. for you. There's no way you can hold that boy. You heard the evidence, Ace. What evidence? Circumstantial, fragmentary. That's not what you were saying a little while ago. You ever made a mistake, Mike? Yeah, sure, a lot of them. And for what it's worth, I hope we've all made one about Greg. But it doesn't look that way right now. It will when I finish. I don't care how many lawyers I have to hire, how many IOUs I have to call in, how many doors I have to knock down to collect. I put them in here, I'll get them out. You gonna book him now? Why? Just thinking. Booking slips like a tattoo. Stays with you no matter how things turn out. You think things are gonna turn out different too? Well, according to Chris Bain, they are. And up until now, he's been a regular walking oracle, hasn't he? You don't make that sound like a compliment, buddy boy. I don't know, Mike. All right. Turns us on to the beach house, right? Right. And the boat. And Maggie Eames's column. And her calendar. So? Well, I don't know. It was you that was telling me those things. Maybe I believe they were facts. But him, Chris Bain, I don't know, no, Mike. Wait a minute, I don't buddy know. Boy, do you know what you're saying? All I'm saying is we never found the two kids he says saw the boat, and I looked all over that area. Well, it's not the first time he's had a head start on this department. Mike, it's like you said, this is not his beat. And he's not doing it for his paper. And you can't tell me you buy his story about a couple of lunches Maggie Ames turned down without pursuing it further. Unless he was a good friend. Mike, tell me I'm wrong, I'll shut up. Now, you listen to me. If you ever back off because of something personal, I'll stuff your head in your pocket. <laughs> Things have been bothering me, too. The guy in the alley? Mm-hmm. He tells you he never met Maggie Ames, and yet he ends up stiff with a medal that she bought for the kid. Well, I figure what he didn't tell me, he told somebody else. Blackmail? Yeah. But who is that somebody else? It isn't the kid who carries a spear in Othello. What could he cough up? Unless... You're right. Unless that's somebody else he met. That somebody else that he saw through a telescope was Chris. Yeah. Well, that's one lousy thing to say about a guy that you've known for half your life. Michael, you're just reading the cards the way they fall, that's all. You're right. All right. Let's check two more cards, shall we? When Chris Bain called us in Belvedere. I guess we better find out how he got that number. See if it's listed. It's not. You check that out, too. Private line installed to Maggie Ames ten days ago. I don't 
don't see how he could have gotten it. No, sir, I didn't let Mr. Bain into this apartment. I mean, why would I? He, he has his own key. I know. It's right this way, sir. Uh, did, did I do something wrong? No. I mean, nobody told me what to do about anybody. I know. Just let us in, key. please. Everything but the why. <laughs> I haven't got that myself. I can't tell you I loved her. I can't tell you I found out she was seeing somebody else. I can tell you I was half out of my head. Drank too many martinis, and when I saw her step off that boat, I... But all that doesn't make motive, does it, Mike? Not to a man who considers himself rational. I didn't know it was Greg, and she... She didn't know it was my son. It was all a terrible... Let's go downtown, Ace. to let the boy go. I suppose, Mike, you know, I also killed that little hustler with his gun. What are you going to buy with that? Time. My son goes free. I buy enough time to get lost. There's only one way you can do it. Squeeze the trigger. Twice. Just a few hours, Mike. Sorry, Ace. Like I've always told you. No exclusives. really works, too, doesn't it? I guess. You guess? What do you mean, you guess? 16th century play that comes to life like that with such contemporary values? A theme that still holds up? Holds up? I'll tell you what holds up. A.B.'s Irish Rose, not A.B.'s Irish Rose? How right. can you even compare those two plays? Well, they're both plays, aren't they? Yeah. They both have actors, don't they? You're putting me on. No, I'm you not. You are putting me I... on. Buy a chili dog, huh? A chili dog? That's right, a chili dog. Everybody goes for a snack after the theater. Tradition!
Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, George Voskovec, Michael Ansara, Christopher Stone, Tonight's episode, The Year of the Locust. This is security in the West Building. The lights keep going out here. Maybe you better get the power company to check on it. Okay, I'll have a look around.
Stick and move, that's all you old men know. <laughs> old man, I'll give you old man, you back track and tap dancer, you. Come on. <laughs> this man moves like a butterfly and stings like a bee. And runs like a rabbit, huh? Baby, this. Look hey, Stone! Yeah. Telephone. <laughs> okay, Tiger. Hey. Lucky that bell rang, because I was just about ready to ring yours. <laughs> What'd you do? Get some of the bill you out after five rounds? I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> I thought of it, huh? <laughs> yeah, Stone. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming right over. Yeah, I know where it is. What? Oh, I was just thinking. Here we are, working out, feeling good, full of ginger. Somebody else takes the count. You got a killer? Ghirardelli, night watchman, walked in on someone at the Imperial Jade Company. Well, come on, let's take them off. done with the scud work. Owner's in the office. Where's the body? Around the corner. Took a slug point blank, looks like. How'd he get in? It's roof door over there. Right. Did you get the corner? On the way. Yeah, powder burns all right. You're right, he took the shot point blank. What's the owner's name? Oh, Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu, yeah. Mr. Wu, Lieutenant Stone, homicide. How do you do, Lieutenant? How much did they get? Over a half a million dollars. All in jade? Yes. Well, any of it carved, traceable? It was the finest grade imperial jade. Flown to any of the world markets, the individual pieces could be sold at full price, and there would be no way of tracing them. The insurance company should reimburse you in full, I should think, shouldn't they? I'm sure they will. They're a very reputable firm. And so are we, Lieutenant. Oh, I know that, Mr. Wu, but every once in a while, some very reputable fingers get caught in some very reputable tills. Here, if you happen to think of anything more on the shooting, my, there's my number. Thank you, Lieutenant. Figure an inside job here, Lieutenant. Oh, it's pretty tough to break in from the outside, isn't it? All those lights on and locks, security checks, and... You're thinking inside. Yeah, unless you've got something that says it's different. Well, Nelson might. There was a power company truck outside at 3 a.m. this morning. He called the company, and there were no details for this area, but there was a stolen truck reported. Let's go. Stay here. You gotta be an engineer or have a diagram for a job like this. Well, let's suppose they did have a diagram, then what? Well, yeah, they could then bring each wire to the alarm system to the electric eye, yeah. They'd know how long to keep it turned off before it could be traced. 
Well, I'll get it dusted, but I don't think a job this smooth will leave prints. Same stuff I found on the stairs up by the roof. You mean down here and up there could be the same person? Two guys who work at the same job, roofing company, gas station. Right. Let's get it to the lab. Can't be. What? Has it been seven or eight years? Could be. What are you talking about? Gypsies, buddy boy. Modern day gypsies, the Fergusons. Who? Fergusons. Haven't you ever heard of Angus Ferguson? No. Well, you will. They're like locusts. They pick a town and they pick it clean. Bunko, huh? Yeah, none better. You know. Old man Angus has mastered every con and hustle you can think of. You want to hit them now before they get started? No, no, no. There's nothing to bust them on. He keeps them all just this side of the lawn, never any violence. Look, get on the box. Tell Bunko to batten down. Right. of my heart. <laughs> Your turn now, Nicholas. Come on, practice, Nicky, practice. This afternoon, the visit is over. We put you on the bus and you go home to your mama. I want you to show her what you learned. Frisco One, this is Alpha One. Hold on, Grandpa. Dad, Grandpa's on the horn. Okay. Hello, Papa. Roger. Alpha One approaching Northwest Sector 24. Count down to arrival. Zero minus two. Our quarters secured? Yeah, Papa, we're all set. Any problems? Uh, no, Papa. Everything's under control. Roger. Over and out. I think maybe... Maybe we ought to think about breaking this off right here and now. But why? It's the old man. You know how he's going to take this. Yeah, I think I do. If he finds out. He's never been killing before. Con, 
Flim flam, hustle. That was murder. Hey, now, wait a minute. That wasn't murder. But, Josh, you... No, 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 wait. You weren't there. I mean, that job was planned, just like everything else we do. And the one thing you can't plan for, can't program, is a freak accident. That guard had a gun. There was no other way out, Al. Now, you want to call that whole scene a, uh, an accident, self-preservation, whatever. Not murder. Papa. Josh is right. The man is dead! All right, we can't change that, Al! Look, you're sitting on a half a million bucks. That's what you wanted. James wanted. Jerry, I wanted. All right, we got that. One more job and the family will never have to hustle again. Stopping now isn't going to change what happened. What would you have done in my place, Al? Okay. Get the doors open. Put the stuff where Papa doesn't find it. Okay. San Francisco. Our city, Mama. Our city. Just for the taking. Yes. Well, congratulations. Uh, well, you were referred to us by your neighbor, Mrs. Kramer, I believe, for a free set of uh, complete rain gutters. Free? Yes, ma'am. You see, if your roof is eight years old or less, well, it's it's like a promotional. Well, your roof is eight years old. Well, it's a little over eight. Well, how much more? Well, a ten. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm very sorry. Oh, but my husband keeps it in excellent repair. Well, Mrs. Cartwright, we have specifications by which we maintain... Actually, what you put on this paper is what really counts, isn't it? Well, yes, it is, but we still have... Oh, eight standards. years. But, Mrs. Oh, please. <laughs> well, maybe just this time. It'll probably only cost you peanuts to bring this roof up for specifications anyway. You win, Mrs. Cartwright. There's a ladder in the garage. Okay, let's get it moving. There we go, Mr. Hopkins. Just give us your John Henry right by the X, right there. And all I'm paying for is the maintenance, right? Oh, yes, sir. Of course, you know you're signing that you won't tell your neighbors about that. That's your uh, guarantee of the company in exchange for promotional value to us. Right? <laughs> I call that square. Uh, by the X, you say? Right. Right there, sir. Doing here. Oh, hi, Mr. Whipple. No, it's not Whipple, it's Ralph Dunn, and I own this house. Now, what are you people doing here? Dunn? Look at that, we come to the wrong house. Terrific. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, sir. You see, Mr. Whipple said that we could resurface his driveway. We're giving him the whole job for half price, being as he's the first one on the neighborhood, and it's kind of, well, good advertising for the company, you know? Well, anyway, I'm sorry if we disturbed you, Mr. Dunn. Done. Think we can find the right place this time? Hey, uh, hey, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you kind of unloaded anyway. Uh, hey, you say you're given a, a resurfacing job at half price? Yeah. Why not me instead of Whipple? Why not? Sure. You got it. Okay. What's going on, Wesley? Overflow from Bunko. Chief said to lend a hand. They can't cover it all. Man, it's like an epidemic. Fergus. They went through Pacific Heights block by block and then disappeared. Well, what about the trucks? Well, you can't stop every truck in town. 
They repaint those phony panel signs at least twice a day. Yes, and both of them were such nice-looking boys. Couldn't have been over 20. Clean-cut, well-mannered, and so I trusted them. You would, too. But the roof never leaked before, and my husband ran the hose over the plastic kept dry. Are you kidding? You've got to snap it up, right? And then they leave. And then you read the fine print. Have you any idea how much maintenance comes to? I bet I can give you a description. It was that sneaky one. That sneaky one who, who called and told me how I'd been picked. They said they were going to resurface my, my whole driveway for half price if I was the first one in the neighborhood. And then the, all they did was spray some kind of stuff on it that, that, that melted the top and, and made it look pretty good. And then they said it was going to dry in six hours. Now look, look, look what happened to these shoes after I just, after I just walked on it. Now, I paid good money for those shoes, and I paid a lot more for a driveway that's oozing into my front lawn. Now, I want my money. Excuse me, may I see that for just a minute? And I want those people put in jail where they belong! Yes, sir. Excuse me. Mike. Someone just had their, uh, driveway resurfaced. By the Fergusons? Sounds that way, yeah. I don't know, I just... Just doesn't make sense. Why not? And you know what I'm thinking? This is the same stuff we found on the steps of the Jade Company. Okay, get it under the microscope. material goes on last, so it shows. Oh, Grandpa, that's what we're doing right now. Let me see those. These are the factory rejects? Well, yeah, Gramps. You see, uh, the Denver house didn't have any more rejects, so they gave us seconds. Seconds? What kind of a unit profit can we expect laying out perfectly good seconds? But, Gramps, you see... You tell Denver this is a business I run, not a charity. All right, Gramps. Okay, okay. Did you see that? What? The way he looked at me. The way they all looked at me. Oh, Angus. Don't tell me I'm imagining, Mama. I've seen it for months now, ever since Ellen married Josh. That one is trouble. I know it. And I know he talks against me. What can any of the family say against you? You hold them together. They can say I'm old, and they'd be right. I won't listen to that. When we began, we lived by our wits to keep the wolf from the door. But now the corporations, the computers, the contracts, the lawyers, the fun is gone. Only the taking remains, and that can be dangerous. People like Josh. They don't know what it is to be hungry, to be without. They've had too much, and they want too much more. I worry even my own sons don't know. I think you worry too much, Angus. I hope so, Mama. I hope so. Come, let's get back to the office. Can you feel it, Al? Down there, all around us. The old man says to do your homework, right? Well, I did mine. You know what the volume is in this place? The securities, I mean. After 12.30 every day, San Francisco is the leading securities market in the world. Josh, it's impossible to pull off. Well, not for us. We've got the manpower, the files, the figures, even a network to get it out of the country. We've got it all, Al. The old man set it up. All we have to do is work it like we did with the Jade Company. Well, it's a little bigger than that, Josh. Well, so are we. Right, brother? It's the same substance, all right, on all the samples. Okay, thanks, Ben. All right. No, something's wrong. Mike, I'm sorry it fits. And what's more ties together both the killing and the robbery. Now, Angus Ferguson is a lot of things, but he's not a killer. Well, maybe you're not the only one who's getting older. Maybe he's not running the show well, that's anymore. That's not funny, buddy boy. The way that old man has built up this organization over the years in wrong hands, oh. 
Hey, just show the rest of the guys that Jake. Okay? Tell them what we pulled off on our own. They'll all be with us. No. Not Papa. Well, we don't need him for this. He won't be involved. Now look around you, Al. Pick a target. There, there, there. We're walking down the street with four of the largest commercial banks in the state, including the world's largest. They're all handling those stocks and bonds. Stuff that takes months, maybe even years to trace. I'm telling you, brother, now is the time. And like the natives say, this is the city. Huh? Okay, Josh. And a baby, come on. places in the Potrero. She used to make cookies like... Did you ever taste a gypsy cookie? No. What are they? I don't know. I never asked her. I only know that I've never tasted anything better in my life. So when did he take off for the road? Oh, just after the war, I think. The old man got the idea from the Germans. Let's grieg a neighborhood and move on fast. And the lady you're gonna see, this is his daughter? Yeah. Bonnie. We went to school together. Well, why didn't she stay with him? Well, I think she took a lot of heat from the kids about her father. Got tired of it, I guess. But disowned them completely. And you think that she's going to put you in touch with the old man? Maybe. No. Whatever they are, they're still my parents, Mike. If the law wants them, the law can find them. Well, I just wanted to ask Angus some questions, Bonnie. That's all. <laughs> you think he'd answer them? This time, yes. It's about murder. What? And do you think it was the family? I think I can prove it. Oh, Mike, you have to be wrong. Papa wouldn't let that happen. Well, maybe he's in trouble. Maybe he didn't know. When was the last time you talked to him? He and Mark all once a year. On my birthday. Your birthday? Say, it's the same month as mine, isn't it? Capricorn? Yes. It's been a while. It's been a while for you to remember that, too. Yes, it has, hasn't it? And I also remember that uh, you were as stubborn as I was. You're not going to let go of this, are you? I can't, even if I wanted to, Bonnie. You know, every month, they send me a check for $1,000. And every month, I tear it up. I pay a pretty high price to lead a decent life, Mike. But I won't turn them in. Then you do know how to reach them. Well, I, I have a number. It changes every time the check comes. Papa wants to make sure I have a place to call in case I need any help. Or if something happens that says he does. I never used it. Use it now, Bonnie. Tell him to set up a meeting any time, any place. Just, just the two of us. It'll be private, I promise. Just to talk. Okay, take it out. And with the comparison figures of the same quarter last year, we see profits are up. Five and one half percent. Plain cash, that's only about $40,000 per family. You look down your nose on that. Do you know what your mama and I had to do for one-tenth of that when you were a baby? Well, I'm not a baby now, so don't talk to me like one. Oh, no, Ma. I'm supposed to go over the books. Okay, let's go over the books. Let's go over all the years of this community enterprise and add up how much we have from it. 
Obviously, you did some adding of your own before you asked for this meeting. Look, Papa, we have the ability and the technology to walk into a city and walk out with anything we want. And we do just that. No, we don't. We only do what you want, what you say. You want something bigger? Yes, a lot bigger. Mike? Like that. Where did you get it? It's not important. I'll decide what's important. Not right now, Papa. What's important is that we talk, because there's a lot more of that and a lot of other places we can take. Silence. Papa, we don't have to change all the methods, only the targets. All I want is silence. I will not be dictated to. Well, you dictate to everybody else. Yes. Because this old gypsy is smarter than everybody else. He has never been the victim of greed. And make no mistake, greed victimizes all who fall into its trap. That's the secret behind our success. We made greed our ally. But it's a two-edged sword, boy. You can live by the greed of others or die by your own. Now, I want to know where this came from, and I want to know why I wasn't told about it before. Angus. Grandpa, there's a call on your emergency line. It's Bonnie. She's the only one who has that number. You're in charge, Albert. Alert everyone, we may have to execute an emergency escape. But when I get back, I want those answers. That's him. He said alone. Michael Stone, look at you. And look at me, eh? An old man. But you, the years are good to you. Hello, Mr. Ferguson. Angus, you must call me Angus, Michael. Now we are men together. <laughs> Sit or stroll? Let's walk. Good. <laughs> You're not an easy man to find. <laughs> If I were, we'd see a lot of each other, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> so. I certainly appreciate your coming. It must be very important to you. I'm sure it's not the policy of your department to meet with a person like myself and not place them under arrest. Well, I don't have a warrant for your arrest, and I don't have any evidence to tie you in personally with this case I'm on. I, I just wanted to talk to you about it. What is that, Michael? Murder. That isn't my, uh, how do you call it, M.O.? I know it isn't. But I believe that a member of the family killed a night watchman at the Imperial Jade Company the night before you came to town. Killed him before we came to town? I don't follow the logic. When you hit a town, you hit it like a bolt of lightning and you disappear just as fast. Now you know that you couldn't do that if you didn't send a few of the boys in ahead. Who were they? I'm not in the habit of discussing the method of my operations with the police, Michael. 
Well, Mr. Ferguson, I know a part of me is a cop. You're right. But there's still a part of me that's a little kid sitting in your kitchen, gobbling down cookies, watching you do card tricks. I believed in you. What do you say? Michael. Who were they? They're my family. I understand that, and I respect it. But isn't it time you taught them to respect the law? I knew you didn't teach them to murder. I taught them all I knew, but never to kill. Well, now you know that one of them is a murderer. You must believe it. Oh, you, you wouldn't have said that. Be in your office tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. I'll let you know. One way or the other, you'll get my message. and you killed. You broke all the rules. And you killed. He didn't kill anybody, Grandpa. You were with him. That's right. And so were they. And so the rest of us now, Grandpa. You all know what happened. And you condone it. Grandpa, we couldn't help what happened. You could have helped by not being there. You could have remembered what I told you about guns and violence. And we could spend the rest of our lives nailing shingles and slopping tar, but we're not going to do it. We're going to take the same samplings that you use in your operation with one difference. We're going to make one big score. It was you. You pulled the trigger. You shot the man and left him. He pulled a gun on me. You shouldn't have had a gun. Gramps, would you rather see me dead? Have Ellen become a widow? Is that what you want, Gramps? You shouldn't have even been there. Papa, we got away with a half million dollars in one night. You broke all the rules. Well, there are going to be some new rules now, Grandpa. And we're going to make them. slowed down anyway. See, you finally got the sketches. Yeah. He's Albert. I know him. He's the oldest. The other two must be grandsons. And you think he's gonna call, huh? He said he would. Maybe he's putting you on, too. Maybe. It's gonna be a blitzkrieg. This is Montgomery Street. They call it the Street of Banks. This is target A, B, C, and D. I figured this baby for two to three hundred thousand in securities. You intend to hit them all at once? That's right. Four banks on the same street, all at the same time. <laughs> 
much. <laughs> well, the hand is quicker than the eye, Gramps, remember? We're only after the securities they're holding. We'll arrive by appointment and deal with one trusting soul in the back room, in the true Ferguson style, of course. How do you leave this trusting soul? Well, just so we won't talk, Papa, he'll be bound and gagged. And shut to death if he resists. Maybe you'd better sit down, Grandpa. We're trying to run a tight ship here, like you taught us. Okay? Tell him. Tell him that Fergusons are not common thieves. They're not murderers. Tell him you will not risk taking any more lives. Tell him that and I will forgive you. Please, sit down. Greed. Greed. You know, I was thinking last night, there's one thing in common with all these Ferguson jobs. You mean about their planning and research? No, no, the trucks. Well, I thought we discussed the trucks, about how they change their signs ten times a week. I know we discussed it, but they have to have some place to change them. A paint shop, garage, warehouse, something. Well, you know that's pretty good for a tap dancer. Come on, let's talk to the building department. What's this? It's been checked out, Mike. Lady named Bonnie Lawson dropped it off at the front desk. Said it was something from her father. Had to be handy with it at nine shop. Well, what is it? Something from the kitchen, a colache. What? Here, I'll explain later. Just read. Michael, you are right. I have been a poor teacher, but I am preparing one last lesson. What's he talking about? Read. I will need time, but I will not take too long. One more hour will suffice. You must proceed as directed and arrive precisely at 10 o'clock. At that time, I will know to what degree I have failed, and the fate of the Fergusons will then be in your hands. Your first stop is the newsboy near Gary and Laguna. Thanks. Right, sir. I should have taken you 10 minutes. It took 12. Your next stop? Kim's treasure house. What is this? A scavenger hunt? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know this is crazy, don't you? I'm a little bit for a killer, and he's playing games. Angus has played games all his life. Yeah, shell games, con games, but this is something else. Fairy building. Come on, he says you've got exactly 11 minutes to make. Stop, Michael. You are exactly 15 minutes from the warehouse where we are headquartered. I have diagrammed a blueprint of the building on the back of this note. I suggest you radio for assistance. You will need four black and whites to block vehicle escape routes marked in red on the diagram. Ten men will be required to cover pedestrian exits, including the roof. These are marked in yellow. Come on. Come on. What about our man? My son-in-law, Josh Evans, shot the watchman. Three others planned the robbery with him. My son, Albert, and two of my grandsons, James and Jerry. There will be no shooting this time. You have my word. The word of a gypsy. He didn't read between the lines. He just retired. What's the address? Beach and Garvey. Beach and Garvey. All units within vicinity of Beach and Garvey, code 3000. I ask you again, stop what you're doing. Albert, 
James, Jerry, Josh. Stay with me and I will stay with you. We'll confess to the police together. Pay our debt together. I beg you. Stop what you're planning and stay with me. That's beautiful, Gramps. I think he can stop the car and we know what we're doing. All right. As you will. Come up. Uh, where are you going? That no longer concerns you, Josh. Any of you. That's right. This is all that concerns you now. It's all yours. The trucks, the merchandise, everything. My boy, I give you the business. It's okay, Al. Come on. After this job, we'll patch things up. We'll get back together. You know that. was right, huh? No guns. Just the word of a gypsy. All right, you know, from the looks of their books, they're out of business for good. Yep. But he got away, the old man. Yeah, of course he did. He's a wizard. He's a what? A wizard, buddy boy. A master of magic. San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Janice Rule, James Olson. Tonight's episode, The First Day of Forever.
Thank you. About ready, love. What's our hurry? I just thought if you need all that stuff, maybe you've got the wrong girl. Girl? <laughs> Bartender, may I have another champagne cocktail, please? Hey, come on. You don't need anything by it, you know? Come on, baby. Look, sales are my game. But I'd pay the price if I didn't like the package, hmm? Is it far to your place? I mean, is it walking distance? No, it's a taxi ride. Why? Well, I don't know if they padded the bill, or maybe I drank more than I thought I did. Hey, look, uh, it's getting kind of laid out, and well, don't be sore, but it, it's a, it's a little tough to handle your kind of action on the size of my expense account, you know. Sure, I know. You're a good kid. I mean that. Here. Right here. Just stay right here. Somebody call a cop. Somebody call a cop! You mean the only 12 nights I've had off all year? All right, how about tomorrow? Dodgers again? Huh? We can go out early, grab a couple of hot dogs, watch batting practice? Mike. Mike, you ever stop to think, maybe I want to see someone with a face a little prettier than yours once in a while? I didn't know how much you hated baseball. I could take that person. Stone. 219. Got it. 219 at Jackson and Montgomery. That's another cutting. Think maybe that's our man? Right into town. Let's move. Thank you. Good well, evening, Lieutenant. Morgan, what do we got? Well, the M.O. looks like the same kook as before. It's another hooker? Uh, Beverly Landau, no middle initial, no age given. Lives at 813 Shea Tower, so business must be pretty good. Where is she? The ambulance just left for general. Still alive? A uh, bad slash on the left forearm, that's all. Pretty shook up lady, though. Three of her sisters in the morgue in the last five weeks, I'd say she got off lucky. Anybody see it? Well, a truck driver from an all-night pharmacy he said he had a rush delivery, so I let him go. His name and number's here in the report. What else have you got? Well, uh, he says he hit this guy when he, when he dashed out on the street after the hooker. He said the guy went down pretty hard, and as he ran off, he was limping. Like, maybe he hurt his right leg pretty bad. Is there any other description? Well, not much. Uh, he said the guy was wearing a dark hat, dark top coat, dark trousers, and dark shoes. Well, we have a lady in the hospital having a dark night. 
So let's move it. See you, Morgan. Yeah, now that's gonna be pretty sore for a while. I'll write up a prescription for you. Would you like something to help you sleep? To sleep, a chance to dream. Why not? What can happen? I'll leave the prescription at the nurse's station. Thank you, good doctor. Perry, do we have a few minutes? Sure. What do you have to have a cigarette? Sorry. No. Miss Landau, now that you've had some time, do you think you could uh, identify the attacker? I'll leave all that behind me. And that's what time will do, Lieutenant. I'm very tired now, and I'd like to go home. Well, how about the man you left the lounge with? It wasn't him. You're sure? Quite positive. It wasn't anybody you knew? Why should it be? We checked your record, Miss Landau. We know you've been booked for prostitution. Well, Mayor always said he's got the country's finest force. No, it wasn't anyone I've ever seen before. Maybe if you came down the headquarters and took a look at some pictures. I've got enough pictures, all in living color. I just want to go home. And maybe you'll change your mind on the way. I can take a taxi. What would the mayor say then? All right. I'd offer you a drink, Lieutenant, but I know you're on duty. Yeah, well, we'll just look around. It'll help fill out the report. Bedrooms are upstairs? Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful kitchen. Thank you. Hey, Steve, you know what it's got? What? It's got one of those, um, oh, uh, blenders built right into the countertop. You like books? Yes. Say, uh... I don't like that fire escape right off your balcony. Mm. It was a terrific selling point when I took the lease. Yeah, I know, I know. Like feeding uh, fastballs to McCovey. <laughs> what? Oh, too easy. Way too easy. Steve? Lady said no. Oh, I think she meant maybe. What do you say? Three days? Lieutenant. <sighs> We're dealing with a maniac, Miss Landau. In less than five weeks, he's butchered three other... You don't have to be delicate. I've read the papers. Excuse me. Hello? Who is this? I asked you where you'd been, Beverly. Did you think I'd let you go? Who are you? Who are you? That doesn't matter. What matters is you. You must die. You will die. Pack a bag. That's right. After a while, they all start to look the same. Yeah, I suppose they would. Yeah, I'll call you at 0800. Thanks. We work for a good man, you know that? He gave us the night off? Oh, he gave us the green light. Sure he did to keep that red one burning. Listen, buddy boy, we're not working vice now. And we've got no charges against that woman. What we've got is a homicidal maniac out there running around loose, and he's a sick man. Okay, Mike. Well, I mean it. Okay. He's counting on people like you, me, everybody. Betting that we don't care. Well, I care. I want to catch him. And I don't care why you care, but you care. You got that? 
All right, what's the blueprint? Well, if this maniac is looking for an address, we'll keep her out of her own place, but we'll have a team in it and on it. What do you want to do with her? Well, you hide her out while I'm beating the bushes. What? Okay, all right. Where do I take her? Malone said to keep it cheap. How about over on the Embarcadero, the Kennedy? Lovely spot, terrific. Just phone in the room number, and don't let anyone in but me. Okay. One more thing. Get her trick book. I want to cross-check it with the one we found on the last girl. Kelly, Stone, homicide. I want a woman officer on a stakeout team. 813 Shade Towers. Yeah, that would be fine. A three-ship rotation, good. One man in and one man out, right. I've got the key. We'll send him down. There's got to be over 200 names in this thing. Anybody we know? I always thought you were a voyeur. I find out what that means. You could be back driving a black and white again. Well, you'll know where to find me, that's for sure. Okay, 408, looks over the water. You and the uh, missus will love it. Where's the telephone? Top of the stairs. Why didn't you tell him? The clerk, so he can tell somebody else. Stone's office, please. Who's this, Les? Hi, Steve. Is Mike there? No, just tell him it's room 408 and the telephone number is 362-9296. No, wait a minute. You better give him to me. Hang on. Look, don't run off, all right? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Wait a minute, is that J-O-S-L-I-N? Yeah. All right, I got it. Look, tell, uh, tell Mike I'll take care of it. He is? <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Guy's on the street already. What? He, uh, he ran your book through the computer with the last victims, and he came up with six names that you both knew. You recognize any of them? Nope. Not one? Sorry. I think the room's down here on the left. Well, 
Well, darling, I think we just must do something about your expense account. Close the door, would you please? Yes, sir. Ah, looks out over the water. Terrific. Look, I don't feel any more comfortable about this than you do, but we're just going to have to sit tight while Mike does some checking. Mike? Mm-hmm. And you're? Inspector Keller. Miss Lando. Nice to meet you. Talk much, do you, Inspector? Peeling paint, torn curtains, cracked lampshade. Terrific. <laughs> Just about says it all, doesn't it? Everything you've been thinking about me. That's my, um, uh, what do you call it, M.O.? Look, if you want, we can go to another place. No need. If the shoe fits, right? Hey, you're a reader. Ever make it through this cover to cover? No. You've had a long night. Howard Jocelyn. I know you. Lieutenant Stone. Keeping pretty late hours, aren't you? Show me something that says that's illegal. Well, show me something that proves where you've been between 10 and 11 last night. Ah, no. Look, Here or downtown, Jocelyn? Doesn't matter to me. Oh, I hope it does, Lieutenant. I really hope it does. You see, I was on a great big bird of about 30,000. Maybe somewhere just east of Denver. Maybe won't make it. How about the plane ticket? Inside pocket. Easy. Right hand. Thank you.
Lieutenant Stone, is it? That's right, Mr. Graham. It's just that my secretary kind of took me by surprise when she said police. Well, you don't happen to have a parking ticket out, do you? <laughs> I just don't have that much to do with the police. Most people don't. Sit down, Lieutenant. Thank you. May I get you something? Coffee? No, no, no I'm happy. Thank you. All right. Hey, that, that's an interesting piece. Are oh, you thinking it's a little out of place here in this jungle? Something like that. Just a reminder of humility. I started out in the basement with a business college course in accounting, a suit with two pairs of pants and a pair of shoes that didn't go with either pair of pants. <laughs> and I've been given a lot through the years. I don't want to forget what others have given. Is there something I can do for you, Lieutenant? Uh, yes, Mr. Graham. Did you happen to know a Eleanor Palmer? Palmer? No, no, not that I recall. Beverly Landau? M may I ask what this is all about? It's a homicide investigation, Mr. Graham. You see, uh, you say that you didn't know either of those women, and yet they both carried your name and telephone number. Now, how do you suppose that happened? Eleanor. Poor Eleanor. I never knew her life. 
last name. Well, you knew she's dead. Yes, that... Oh, it's horrible. Beverly Landau? Yes. Of course, nothing's happened to Beverly. Well, she was hurt, and I'm trying to find out who did it. Hurt? Yes. Oh, n <sighs> Am I interpreting you correctly? You think I'm the one who's going around stabbing those girls? No, I think that whoever did it knew them, and that the two of them knew you. But surely there were others. Yes. It wasn't me, Lieutenant. It's strange. It's all in your point of view, isn't it? I mean, from up here, everyone is the same down there. But I met Beverly Landau down there at a time when I needed a lot more than I could pay for. If she's in trouble now, I'd like to help her. Oh, I'm sure she'll be all right, Mr. Graham. And if you'd rather I left through another door, why? Like... Oh, no, certainly not. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I will, Mr. Graham. Thank you. So much. You didn't. No. No, just the pages that were turned down. I don't believe it. <laughs> How's your arm? It's still there. I got some instant coffee in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Instant or the better. Oh, hold it. I should earn my keep somehow. Wonder what old Dr. Freud would say about that. So speaking about motivations and all that jazz, why would a guy who's 20, 20 what? 28. Nobody's 28. Just had a birthday. I mean, like you like to read. And you've gone to college, right? Right. Well, why the police department? Steve. Hey. Yeah, room service. Ah, uh, Lieutenant, you saved us from drinking the hemlock. What? Socrates. That's how he killed himself. He drank the hemlock. Oh, yeah, hemlock. I know, yeah, Socrates. Yeah, wasn't that that, um, wait a minute now, um, oh, that small, crazy Frenchman who became emperor when he married that, um, help me out, you know who I mean, that, um, uh, Elizabeth, right? <laughs> I think we just fed McCovey a fastball there. Believe me, it's not the first time. Yeah, get him while they're hot. Sinkers. Well, you got anything? Mm-hmm. Three fast strikes. You're up, buddy boy. Oh, wait a minute. What about the uh, phone tap? No calls. Nothing? Nope. Not as of 20 minutes ago. And while you're looking for that guy with a bad leg, I'm going to be resting two tired feet. <laughs> Mike, I have to talk to you outside for a minute. Sure. Sure. Steve? Take care. Steve? 
Now, wait a minute. This was your game plan, okay. not mine. Okay, okay, okay. What is it? I think there was somebody outside the door last night. And I was half asleep, but I heard the door handle. Footsteps. And when I came out that window down there was open. I think we ought to get a dust. I think maybe I ought to dust you. Now, didn't I tell you to keep that door locked? All right, Mike, okay. But if that guy hasn't called yet, maybe I wasn't hearing things. Maybe he phoned her from someplace close by last night, saw us, knows what we're doing with her, where she is. You just keep your thoughts up front, buddy boy. Because if he's on this list, he could be opening a door with a weapon in his hand. Okay, I'll handle it. But you'll get the window. Yeah, I'll get the window. I left the keys on the dresser. Okay. Mike, keep the door locked, all right? Get out of here. Discount. Oh, you broke up that pair of fives, didn't you, huh? Got you on the run. <laughs> oh, I deserve it. I was thinking, oh, I sort of got angry with Steve last night for picking this place. He didn't pick it, I did. Sorry, but we're on a budget. Yeah, well, why'd you pick him? Steve had to. What do you mean he had to? He cares. Say, what did you discard the time before last? Oh, nine of hearts, mm-hmm. Mike, open up. I told you. Easy on my leg, huh? He says he heard it water skiing in Tahoe. True. Hi, baby. You know this man? Was this the man that attacked you? No. Look, Beverly, you don't have to be afraid. No, it wasn't him. But you do know him. His name is Sonny Lane. But Sonny doesn't kill people with knives. That's not nice. Come on. I mean, business is business. He, uh, he had the girl, Eleanor Palmer. She worked for you, too? I don't know what you're talking you about. You know just what I'm talking no, about, man. I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, Lane, come on, get lost. Hey, you're looking really good, Bev. Which two? You lose some weight or something? Hey, when are you finished with all this? Everybody sit down. Hey, you come up, you punk. You take a walk. Come on, take a walk. Come on, you take a walk. Maybe you could use a cold shower, too. Now, I asked you about all those names. Why didn't you tell me? What was I supposed to say? He was my business manager till I got too old. I'd like a breath of fresh air. I think you both could use some fresh air. Just keep me posted on the location.
about that whole scene. It's all right. I'm sorry, too. I, I mean, Mike told me the room wasn't your idea. Let's see if I can do something that is my idea. Is Inspector 81 to headquarters? Go ahead, 81. Hi, right, can you tell Stone there will be 107M at the wharf rat, please? Roger. 107M? Yeah. M is in meal. At the wharf. You said you wanted some fresh air. It doesn't come any fresher. <laughs> That's terrific. <laughs> you say it's a positive print? Okay. I'm rolling. Blessing. I want two backup units to meet me at 1413 Pine Street, 21st floor. Suite 211. Found you, man? Mm -hmm. The prints on the window we dusted check out to a Lauren Graham. You'll find the IDs on my desk. I'm going after a warrant. You put out a full APV. Suspicion of murder. Oh, smell good. Fantastic. You want to hear something crazy? Mm -hmm. All the time that I've lived here, I never had one of these. Tastes good? I don't know. I've never had one either. I'm going to have to call in a new 10 7. Could uh, we have our M first? Sure. I mean, over here, there's something so delicious, so scrumptious, yeah. so. Look at that. Is that fresh room? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Winters, but I wouldn't be here with a warrant if it weren't important. Yes, I understand, Lieutenant, but it's all a bit strange. Man. Oh, he works so hard. His, his discipline is. <sighs> Nothing, just picking up a little on the local color. I forgot. You have to look at things a little differently than most people, hmm? Well, I wouldn't say you have to, but it gets that way, yeah. You know, you never answered my question about why. Why I became a cop. Just seen the right thing? Oh, because it's public service. <laughs> no, we don't serve, at least not the way it sounds. We just react against anyone who dares society to deal with them. Guess there has to be somebody around to do that. But why you? Why not somebody else? Guess that's what's wrong with a lot of things, isn't it? The hooker and the cop. Whole world spits on us, but they can't get along without us. You know that we work the same lousy hours see the same lousy people, and we get the same lousy steers if anybody happens to know what we do. Well, somebody's got to do it, so here we are. I don't think you like your job. I survive. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I don't think so, no. Oh, come on, baby, it's been that way from, from forever. Well, forever can start whenever you say so. As long as you're around to make a choice. That's that's what that book was all about you laid on me last night. Choice. And do me a favor. Will you, will you cut out the baby jazz and just leave that for guys like Sonny Lane? Sure. And it's supposed to change, right? Forget the Sonny Lanes. Forget the people. Forget all the faces, all the years, all the places. It doesn't come off with makeup, you know. Look at me. No. Now you look at me. 
Just look. Look. Can you see it? That's you. That's what I see. So don't do any numbers about dignity and self-respect, all right? Let's just let forever start today. Listen, what would you think about, um... Hot fudge on top of shrimps. <laughs> Perfect. Let me just call in a new 10-7. Let me do it. 10-7-F. F. He's in Friends. You jump. All those people down there will know that you killed yourself for a woman like that. She's unclean, a harlot. In darkness, they corrupt in darkness. They must die. She's down there right now. And she's waiting for you. Yeah. Just hoping that you'll jump. Then she can tell everybody why. Dirty, filthy harlot! Lying! Vicious! Harlot! Dirt! You touched me. You've been with her. Graham! Have you touched me? Mr. Graham. Do you remember me, Mr. Graham? Lieutenant Stone, we met in your office. My office? That's right, Mr. Graham. You are Lauren Graham, aren't you? I, uh... Well, now, you do remember me, Mr. Graham. Your secretary, Miss Winter, she asked me to help find you. She's a lovely woman. Everything a woman should be. Decent, honest, Clean. Yes. Miss Winters. Good, good woman. Inspector Stone, is it? Lieutenant Stone, that's Inspector Keller. Well, how do you do, Inspector? Mr. Graham. Well, is there anything I can do for you, gentlemen? Well, I just thought that maybe you and I could have a little talk together. Oh, well, certainly. I'd be glad to. Good.
we stopping here for? Just get me the paper. I want the box score. You can't get a paper in there. Inside, you can. Since when? Since now. Yes, sir. It's a lovely day. That job? Nobody, boy, you did. <laughs> Give me the box score. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna get you a box seat at Candlestick Park tonight. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> A Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Carl Betts, Geraldine Brooks, Patrick Conway, Norman Alden, Harry Rose. Tonight's episode, The Bullet. I do want to talk to oh, you. Look, I just I want just to get got the dandiest notion. Clip an article out of the school paper, you know, from your college. Jeff, we're going to get you a better job. Now, look, I read the article. I don't want the position. Well, you haven't given it as much thought as I have. You know, we got to think about Alice, Jeff. Your future. Alice has been a good wife to you. She's gone without. She's put up with our limited means. But head of the department, it's a wonderful opportunity. And the salary is $2,800 a year more than we're making now. Not interested. $2,800. It still only brings your payments to $185 a month, son. No. Jeff, you've got to consider it. Now, look, you're eligible for the advancement. Uh, you've passed up better positions twice now, son. No. It means opening up my records. As long as I stay just what I am, nobody cares what I've been. Jeff... That's sad. Uh, don't have anybody scheduled it. Uh, uh, Jeff, would you mind stepping over here into the kitchen, please, and waiting just a few minutes? Yep. Mr. 
Dayton? That's right, sir. Borman. I never met Dr. Borman, but he's 58 years old. You're not. I made it very clear to Dr. Borman he was to come in person. This is a confidential relationship. You got a tape recorder in that briefcase? I'll take the file. All right. Just put the gun away. I'll get it. He was on the beat when I was. In um, 1959, he took a bullet in the gut in the liquor store holdup. Drew light duty after that. Let me guess, records, right? Mm-hmm, you guessed right, records. Four years ago, Internal Affairs got wind of something, and he resigned under pressure. Steve, take a look at this. Newspaper clippings. Right up to date on everybody that he's had a record of. My guess is that he nailed everyone who was beginning to make it. Blackmail. Mm-hmm, blackmail. I wonder what it is that makes a guy go wrong. You know somebody tore off today's date already? Say, maybe the lab can make something from the impressions. Mike, how about it? Can we roll with the body now? Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Fellas are finished with the pictures and the measurements. That bullet's been pried out. Check the others, will you, buddy boy? I think this one's still in here. Yeah. Charlie, you gonna be able to pull this one out? Yeah, we'll get it. Lieutenant? Yeah. You might want to have a look at the kitchen floor before we scrape it. There's, we've got some blood evidence in there. But Dayton died over here. What's blood doing in the kitchen? Is this the only place? No, there's some more by the rear door. He must have gone out that way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the slug that came through this door? You got me. We have a clean hole, obvious entry and exit, and the bullet got lost. What do you mean, got lost? Bullets don't get lost. Maybe it's spent and fell. Now we've checked the entire floor. Then there must have been a third person. Someone was here, got hit, and got out with our bullet. We got ourselves a witness. Better than that, we've got a witness with a bullet in. Could have been somebody who worked for him. Could be. Or somebody who's got an appointment on this calendar.
Mr. Light was here. The young boy that you were supposed to tutor at 1.15. So I blew ten bucks. Well, that's a great attitude. That's really great. Check yesterday. What? I said, did you cash it? I'll be at the store. Jeff, would you come out, please? I'll see you when you get back. I think we'd better talk. Not now. Now. It's just too much money, Jeff. Well, for too long a time. Alice. Later. Okay, okay. Later. Jeff, if it's someone else, then tell me. Oh, you have to. What happened? I'm not sure what happened. There's a bullet in my shoulder. I'll get Phil. No! I just have to report gunshot wounds, Alice. But you need medical attention. You can't live with a... a bullet in your shoulder. Well, I'll just have to try. What does that say, Phillips? Phillips, Williams, Borman. Phillips, Williams, and Borman, huh? Good. How about the blood? Uh, the blood scrapings from the kitchen floor are type AB. Well, is that common or uncommon? What? Rare. Four percent of the population. Four percent. Charlie, what about the bullet they dug out of the wall in the study? Yeah, what about that? 38, police positive. We ran it against Dayton's gun and got a match. One cartridge fired. Dayton shot once. The killer shot twice. The witness's blood is AB. Good. Let's run this type against the three names. Looks like a cop finally found a way to zap the policeman's pension fund. That's not funny, Johnson. You know what the papers and TV would do with that, don't you? I'm sorry, Mike. It's just not funny. Now we got three names, one blood type against three possibles. That's Phillips. We let Healy and Lessing take him. Then there's Borman and, um, who's that? Williams. Williams. Borman and Williams. We'll take those two. I think we're really on solid ground with this state and blackmail thing. You gotta be. His books have him dragging down over $40,000 last year. $40,000? $40,000 in dribs and drabs, $100 a month here, $200 there, and the topper is there's no record of him paying any income tax. Hey, Dan, got the coroner's report? It's being typed. I'll pick it up in 10 minutes. Let me have what you've got on Phillips and Williams. I'm just looking through this stuff at Dayton's. Looks like a cop finally found a way to make a decent living. Dan. It's five minutes to the coroner's office and five minutes back. That's ten minutes. Okay, Mike. And on the way, check at the desk and find out if any doctors called in on gunshot wounds. Right. Phillips, Albert A. Conviction of child molestation, 63, the year Chino. Probation concluded in 66. Put Lessing on it. Right. Williams, Jeffrey David, murder two. Conviction, 1943. I was just 18 then. Didn't have my driver's license yet. I was sitting in the car waiting. I heard the shots from inside the gas station. Three shots. Jimmy ran out, jumped in the car, and we drove up. If any of that bourbon left, Alice, I, I could use something. Of course, I'll get it. 
Well, we sideswiped another car a few miles away. A police car took off after us. And Jimmy lost control. We ran off the road, turned over. Jimmy was killed. I was arrested. And you had nothing to do with the shooting. It'd be hard to deny it. I needed to fix as badly as Jimmy did. What? I was an addict, Alice. Almost two years then. Before it was fashionable. Anyway, the gun was found in the car and the money from the gas station register. It was an easy conviction. How long were you in prison? Four years. Another eight on probation. It's hard to believe all of this. Well, maybe it shaped me up. Turned me around, anyway. I stayed straight, went after a degree, got my master's. Then Harley Richards put his neck on the line for me. Junkies with felony convictions are not highly regarded by college administrators, but the, he was determined to have me in his department, and being dean of the college, he kept my records closed. No one there knew about my conviction. I see. No wonder you were so upset when he died. But then, um, this man, this, uh, uh, Dayton, when did he first start calling you? About six years ago. Just when it looked like I was going to start making it. There was some conjecture in the college paper about offering me a full professorship. But you didn't accept? Of course. Of course, that's why you never accepted. Because you were afraid of what the regents might find out. But, but then it had nothing to do with my being too ambitious or... Or you're being afraid of facing responsibility. Oh, darling, I, I've said such awful things to you. I'm so sorry. No, Alice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't tell you a long time ago. For all the money that went to Dayton, money that should have been yours, all the nice things I wanted you to have. It doesn't matter. It's over now, hmm? All over. Now we just have to get you to a doctor. No. Oh, yes, Alice, we Alice, I'm not gonna throw it all away now. Maybe later, when we can get away. After final exams, we can, we can go somewhere and have the bullet taken out. Later. You know, Mike, there's no record of payment on this guy, Borman. Last name on the ledger, today's date. Never kicked in any money, eh? Uh -huh. There's no appointments with him in Dayton's calendar up until now, either. I couldn't find a dirt file on him. Carnage report. Hey, Mike, that stuff I said before about Dayton. Forget it, Dan. Just forget it. But if by any chance you're thinking of moonlighting out of R&I, &I, just remember that Dayton got his last payment in um, one lump sum. Well, if the end of that finger is either 22 or 32 caliber, that'd make it about right. Carnage says that uh, Dayton was killed instantly, single gunshot wound, apparently 22 to 32 caliber bullet. Even though the slug wasn't recovered, he figures by the clean exit it was a steel jacket. How much money do you have on the body? Uh, 530 cash, another 100 and a half in plain envelope. Time of death? Between 11.30 and 1.30. Got a suspect? Yeah. Dr. Marvin Borman. Spell it out. Manslaughter, drunk driving, 59 to 11 months in probation. But listen to this. 63, conspiracy to commit assault and battery. Borman hired a Jerry Casey to commit assault on Gordon Dawson, a man who threatened to bring malpractice charges. Number one. He's our number one. A guy with a record. He's due for his first appointment with a blackmailer, but he doesn't go in with cash. He goes in with a gun. Come on, buddy boy. We got our first house call to make. Uh, <clears throat> room 105, please. Doctor? Yes. You're late. I had a patient in labor. I'm sorry. It was, it was a difficult delivery. Mine wasn't. Your file's here, and I want the balance on account. Meet me in 
In 45 minutes at the base of the cross on Twin Peaks. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, have them wait outside, please. Yeah, go ahead. Problem, Doctor? Do you know any reason why the police should be here? No, do you? 45 minutes, Doctor. Yes? Lieutenant Stone, this is Inspector Keller. I believe you knew a James Dayton. Uh, no, I don't think I do. Well, that's very strange, because you had a uh, two o'clock appointment with him today. <laughs> Gentlemen, I don't know what this is about, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that I can prove that I was at my hospital from 10 o'clock this morning to just a few moments ago. And I, I never met this man, I'm sure. Never. Well, how about phone calls? Did he call you to discuss your prison record? No. Dr. Borman, may I ask you your blood type? No, you may not ask me my blood type. Well, do you object to being examined by a police physician? Yes, I object very strenuously, just as strenuously as I object to these insinuations. Now, if I'm a suspect, I'm entitled to counsel. Isn't that the truth? That is the truth, Dr. Borman. And you know, I think that you were probably in your hospital when Dayton was killed. And I'll tell you what else I think. I think that you hired someone to deal with a blackmailer. That is not true. Here, let me throw no... that away for you. Wait, no, that's my... Give me... I'm sorry, I thought you were through with it by now. When can I call my attorney? As soon as we've got you booked. Now, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. I guess the Capri Motel, piece of paper said room 105. Describe him for us? Yes, I'd say he's about 40, 6'2, graying hair. Nice looking. Smith. Yes, sir, that's the name on the register. Phone calls, no locals. One long distance. Kansas City, I think. Would you have a record of that call? Possibly the name? Yes, I certainly do. The number, anyway. Shall I get the book? It would be very helpful. Thank you, please. City newspaper. Magazines. Mike. Look at this. Compartment. Two cartridges fired. I think we just scored. Scored? Nah. We're not even within field goal range. I guess you're right, circumstantial. But if that bullet matches the gun... Good as an eyewitness. I just hope he doesn't know about our third man, because if he does, there goes our ball game. He's gonna be looking for that bullet, too. Get this wrapped up. Call a stakeout unit. If he shows, nail him on the spot. <laughs> a full set of his books. And also, there was $150 in an envelope in Dayton's pocket. 
I have nothing to say, Inspector. Except that I didn't kill him. I believe that. But I think you were there behind that kitchen door. Your blood types AB, Mr. Williams, was on your record. It was also on the kitchen floor. Mr. Williams, we have the gun that we think killed Dayton. And that bullet could tie it all together for us. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. You know you can be subpoenaed. If you have a case. But you need the bullet for that, don't you? Mr. Williams, I can understand how you feel and why you'd like to keep it quiet and to yourself, but you do understand, don't you? That you could die with your secret. What do you mean? Well, I mean that Mr. Williams... The man who shot Dayton has the original calendar page. And if we can find your husband, so can he. If he's fool enough to stay around looking, <laughs> I'd think he'd want to be as far away as possible as quickly as he could get there. Well, he's a pro. And pros aren't in the habit of leaving loose ends, and you're a loose end. It's a very uh, good deduction, Lieutenant, but just theory. L Lieutenant, could I just have a minute alone with my husband? I don't have a minute, Mrs. Williams, and I don't think your husband does either. I don't want the coroner to give me that bullet. I want it from him right now, so come along. We're going to the hospital. I don't think so, Lieutenant. You don't have that authority. You're a policeman. I shouldn't have to tell you the law. The law? Mm. I did some checking. And it seems that among our other personal guarantees in this country is the guarantee that our bodies are inviolate. Not even the Supreme Court can force a man to submit to a surgical operation. That's the law, gentlemen. And I'm sure that as officers sworn to uphold it, you won't do anything to make me break it. Judge Carlson, I got a unanimous verdict. Williams was right. The rights of homo corpus, man's body, are inviolate. Mike, we can't touch him. Homo corpus, huh? Great. <sighs> no way to break him. Not the way I read it. The man we're talking about has coughed up almost $10,000. He had to live with this pressure for almost six years. Yep, that make him pretty hard, all right. Yeah, too hard to break just because he's got a bullet in his arm. I guess that makes our job much easier, doesn't it? All we've got to do is find the killer. <laughs> well, maybe Kansas City will come through. Yeah, did you get word yet? Yeah, the number's listed to a guy named Sid Winters. He's a big honcho in the local rackets. They're pulling photos on guys he runs with that fits our description. Let me break your day, Lieutenant. The lab says the gun you brought in could be the murder weapon. Those two shells were high-velocity load, and both bullets did wear steel jackets. Terrific. That means the bullet in William's shoulder could do it for us. Williams, that's the second guy on the list, right? That's right. He took the slug? Yeah, he took it right out of the case. What? The rights of homo corpus. You can't cut a man open if he doesn't want to be cut open. So, Mr. Sunshine, what else you got to brighten my day? How about that? Not much. I uh, did see the other fellow, Phillips. Uh, he was there just like the calendar said, 12 o'clock sharp, got hustled right out. Apparently, uh, Dayton liked to keep everybody apart, didn't want anybody to see anybody else. Kind of like a shrink, you know? Did you check out the Phillips story? He says he went straight to a business meeting. Blessings on it now. You got this Borman in the tank, don't you? We got nothing without the bullet. Borman won't talk and Williams won't talk either. Oh, Lieutenant. Kansas City just called. They're sending in a picture. Coming through, Casey. Well, that looks like the man the motel manager described. Yeah, we'll get it under her nose for a positive. How you doing, Kansas City? Good, good. This is Inspector Keller. Uh, we have some prints we want to check against this man. What's his name? Coyle, Victor Ray. That's C-O-Y-L-E? Right. Well, could you send us his full jacket, please, and maybe uh, run another one of these through? Thank you. We're putting on an APB. Suspicion of murder.
Phillips. Yes? Would you come with me, please? What for? Just a few questions. Police? That's right. Any place that's private, we... Oh, this is fine. Hey, what's going on? I told you, fellas, I didn't see anybody. Move it. I haven't seen any ID. Are you inside? Seems we're late again. I apologize for keeping you past the hour, but I, uh, I think the extra review will reflect itself favorably in your blue books next week. This will only take a minute. I'd hoped I'd made myself clear, Lieutenant. I guess I don't use the language as effectively as I thought. It's my turn to be clear, Mr. Williams. The man that you won't help us find just killed somebody else. First name on the list, Albert Phillips. He stripped him to the waist after he shot him. Does that tell you anything? He wants that bullet, Mr. Williams. He knows it can convict him. No. No? What do you mean, no? Phillips is dead and you're next on that list. I can't make a public testimony. You don't make sense. You know that, Mr. Williams? You don't make any sense at all. Now, if the lead in that bullet doesn't kill you, the next one will because it's going to be right on target. If I give it to you, what kind of a target will I be, Lieutenant? Now, it's a standoff, gentlemen. You can't use coercion by the school authorities and you can't give it to the press. That'd be harassment, so... Wait here a moment. Let's see, um, there was really only uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, I guess. You, uh, you remember our discussion of Ezra Pound? He's a poet. I know, I know. I'm sorry. You're all so impressed with his erudition, his, uh, his easy use of recondite images. Something like a Tokyo Rose, right? right. See, I told you, I know. You marvel at this contemporary man's command of the classics, the prodigious amount of work, the undeniable genius, and you all agreed that he was more than deserving of his rank as one of the greatest American poets of the 20th century. Did you ever read any of his poetry? Who has time to read any of his poetry? I barely have time to read booking slips. And yet this man was denied that reputation in his own country. Why? Mr. Miller? Some people thought he was a traitor. Some people? Most people, I guess. No guess, Mr. Miller. Truth. And why? The propaganda broadcast he did for the enemy during World War II. Right. An action which people could not forgive. And what does this tell us about people? Mr. Garrow? No, no. Well, let me bring it a little closer to home. Some of you have uh, found enough in this class to enroll with me for the American novel. But what have you discovered that I had a criminal record? It's criminal when you hand out those low grades, man. <laughs> Well, think about it. Suppose that at one time I had been a junkie. Pretty heavy fiction. Let me lay it on a little heavier. What if I had been involved in a killing and actually been found guilty of murder? Would it still be the same between us? Or would you find yourself saying, this man who pleads for ethical conduct, for scrupulous morality, who demands that I plumb the depths of my ability to reason, the same man has been found guilty by society of having acted without reason? Would you uh, say to yourself, why should I listen to him, Mr. Miller? I'd have to think about that. Yeah. And what about the regions? What they think about it? Forget it, baby. School's out. <laughs> I guess the point can't be made any more succinctly than that. What a man is or does in private becomes a part of his public image. Good or bad, 
it's on the record. And whether that's good or bad, I leave you to think about. Well, that's it. Except that it's been a pleasure having you all this semester. Good luck on the final. Maybe we could get out of here, all right? routine about a man's private life and his public image being one. I knew that all the time. But uh, the way those kids reacted, especially at the end, that tells me a lot I didn't know. <laughs> that's tradition. No, sir, no way. That's respect. Hard earned. Yeah. Listen, I remember more than one very long silence at the end of the semester. <laughs> I guess we did get along rather well. Hi, Mr. Williams. Hello, John. That means more to you than staying alive, doesn't it? Yes, that is my life, Lieutenant. Digging, probing, watching them take hold of an idea, taking it further than I knew it could go, loving it. And loving you for helping. If you read my file, you know I went a long way without any help. A long way in the wrong direction. What I can give now makes up for that. Let's get you to a hospital. No, I'm going to be all right. If you'll uh, excuse me, there's some papers I have to get out of my office. Mr. Williams, there's one thing you said in your class, you being someone who demands ethics and morals from other people. Now, how are you able to equate that with allowing a killer to run loose? From what you've told me, Inspector, the killer is interested in only one person now. Now, if that's true, and I'm the only one who stands to be hurt by it, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, if he won't keep up his guard, we're gonna have to do it for him. Let's get on the box. Tell him we're staying with him and we'll get a stakeout unit for the house. your husband, Mrs. Williams. You want to see him again, alive. Get in.
Hello. Jeff. Alice, I didn't know you'd gone out. I went to the store, Jeff, uh, and... Mr. Williams, I have your wife. tell you to do, Mr. Williams? Downtown. Corner of Jones and Geary. I stand on the corner. Seven o'clock. He's got Alice. Tell me it, this. Did you see a man at Dayton's? Can you describe him? Six two forty. Graying hair? He said he'd kill her. Don't worry. We'll take care of it for you. Please. Be very careful. We will, Mr. Williams. We will. But do you give the doctor permission to take the bullet out? and slow. Got him? I can't tell. If it is your husband, stop. If it isn't, just keep going. Is it him? Yes, that's Jeff. Gary and go straight, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Williams, sit forward. Go. Go! Subject vehicle proceeding west on Gary. Do not intercept. Do not apprehend. Alert inspectors 6368, helicopter 1. Come to the next turn off. Take it. Cut the lights. Where are we going? On the next side road, Mr. Williams. that thing, find out what the chopper's got. This is 8-1. We've lost contact. Subject vehicle just uh, doused his lights and turned right on next side road west.
I can't see. You don't have to. We're almost there. Look, what you wanted was a bullet. That's why I'm here. Now, there's no need to involve my wife. You're not a well man, Mr. Williams. Don't talk. Pull up here. Just to the right. Out. Just side. Both of you. Right on out to the dump. They're in the open. Let it go. This is 8-1. Have the helicopter hit it! I guess we're out of the woods, Mrs. Williams. Say, uh, yeah, I think your husband's just getting out of surgery about now. Mrs. Williams, we have a radio in the car if you want to find out his condition. Okay, what's the big mystery? Mike, how long have you been a detective? Oh, very funny. <laughs> well, now, buddy boy, you've been with me long enough to know that I work one of two ways, right? Right. Booze or muscle. Take your choice. All right, all right. We're going over to Williams' house for dinner Saturday night, right? Right. After dinner, we'll be sipping our brandy, congratulating him on how the Regents decided to keep him on, right? That's right. We'll be celebrating a man's whole new life. Exactly. But since when do you buy brandy in a bookstore? No, 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 no. I'm thinking about after the brandy. After the brandy? Yeah. I don't pick up that clue. I bought you a little present. What is it? Open it. Poems, poetry. It's Ezra Pound. Remember Williams talking about him at the school? Yeah, I remember he talked to his class about him. That's yeah. right. That's for you. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't read this. Why not? Listen, rain is drop and stain is slop. Oh, come on now. Wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> yeah, rain is drop and stain is slop. Skid is bust and slop with us. Oh, now, come on. Isn't poetry supposed to be clear and to the point? That's right. Well, I've got something to the point and clear for you, young fella. <sighs> what is this? Sit quietly. You have a right to remain silent. Is that clear? That's clear. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the part of law. Is that to the point? That's to the point. All right, then get going.
of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, John Saxon, Belinda J. Montgomery, Harry Rhodes. Special guest star, Joseph Cotton. Tonight's episode, a collection of eagles. We are 40 units. It's him? Maybe. I'll go, Fiennes. Vince? Ernie. Annie, good to hear your voice. Listen, did you get them? Yeah, the whole lot. Beautiful. Uh, where are you? I'm uh, just off the Embarcadero. 7 Front Street, room 25. Oh, there's a rear entrance. Uh, did you have any trouble? <laughs> Not a hitch. I smell like a ship's bilge, and I gotta wash off half of Mexico. Well, look, uh, uh, there's no rush. Uh, take a good long bath and get a good night's sleep. You've earned it, and uh, we'll see each other tomorrow. Sure. Uh, maybe it's better anyway. I'm, I'm beat. See you tomorrow, then. He's got them, Tommy. Enough to buy us the world. Tommy, where are you going? You're insulin. This is no time to be falling on your face. Since I don't know whether I can do it. You'll do it, Tommy. Just like we planned. You'll do it for the money and for me.
Ashes to ashes. Yeah. What do you think, Doc? Another cigarette in bed? It's hard to say yet. He was pretty well done. Well, I'll get the arson detail in here and see what they can turn up. How long for the autopsy report? I'll get on it right away. Hi, Doc. Hey, Steve. Mike, we got a John Doe. Manager said the night clerk didn't register anybody for this room. A fin or a cell buck under the table. That's one way to beat the room tax. Yeah. Did you get the uh, clerk's name and address? Radio unit's on his way to pick him up. Uh, well, maybe we got something. Yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty black. The numbers look good. Go oh, put your young eyes on that. Nothing. Nothing, eh? Yeah. Look, poke around on there some more. Thanks. Hmm. You know, a guy with a gun who doesn't register in a flea bag like this, you know something's fishy. Mike. Yeah. Take a look at this. Looks like one of those uh, gold luck charms or something. Gold? Maybe. Luck charm, I don't think so. them of some interest after all. Mr. James, you startled me. <laughs> In this contraption, I sometimes feel like a mechanical satyr. Body of a man and legs of a champion. What is it? What? You're troubled. No, I'm just tired, I guess. I worked late last night typing up the notes. The university should have warned you I'm a slave driver. Well, the last person to leave the project did say something to that effect. Oh, that was a big mistake all around. A man can't dictate an autobiography to an insensitive soul. Uh, what about you? Any complaints? Oh, no. The room you gave me is just lovely. Pay is fine, and the company is very stimulating. Oh, thank you. Tell me the truth. Now... When I came in a moment ago, you were thinking, I'm an eccentric old man who hoards his gold coins like a modern-day Midas, weren't you? No, not really. I was just thinking they must be very valuable. Well, in round figures, half a million dollars. I had no idea. Would you like to hear how I came to collect them? Uh... No, I think we should uh, finish what we left off with yesterday. Um, what do you remember about your 1927 trip to New Zealand? You are a very odd young woman. The first one I ever met who was more interested in my memory than my money. Well, people already know about the John R. James fortune, and I want the book to be about the man. Thank you. Let's go on the terrace. Shall we? All right.
What does the coroner say? Nothing yet. Is that thing worth anything, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Specific gravity gold, slightly less than 22 carats. 900,000 is fine. Weight, exactly 516 grains. All of which means? All of which means it's a planchette. A what? A planchette. It's a metal disc that's ready to be stamped into a coin, right? Right. I use it in crossword puzzles a lot. You got time to do crossword puzzles? I don't give you enough to do around here, huh? Say, um, what kind of a coin does this thing make? Well, I got some books over here to tell you for sure. That one to me looks like a double eagle size. Double eagle, that's a $20 gold piece, isn't it? Hey, Chuck, one for the old folks. You like words, huh? Yeah. Read them to me. See you, Charlie. Well, there's 464 grains of pure gold in the planchette. And how many grains in an ounce? Uh, 450, isn't it? No, I think it's 480. Ah, oh, 450. 480. 480? Yeah. Well, they must have changed it since my high school physics course. <laughs> they must have. <laughs> Look, um, no, let's not read for a minute, huh? Now, the night clerk said that the victim came in with a satchel. Right. We don't find a satchel. But we do get this uh, little goodie here. Which ye old book here says is illegal in the U.S. except as coins held by collectors. And which could have been in that closet for years where they clean out those waterfront dives. Possible, yeah. Think we're spinning our wheels? Close to an ounce of gold. Worth about, old, oh, what, 65 or 70 bucks on the international market? I think it's about that. Stone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right there. Looks like maybe we got something. What? Coroner said murder. Tommy. Here? He's busy right now. Is there anything I can do to help? Karen. Hi. You're early. I missed you. Come, let's take a walk. brought in to help out a little. He doesn't know anything about what's going on, no, does he? Oh, he barely knows enough about coin stands and the questions that come in off the street. Did you bring the diagram? Yes. Are you sure you have each coin in the exact place he keeps it? Yes. Vince, I'm frightened. Of what? I don't know. Doing anything like this. Getting caught or hurting that old man. We're just going to trade one set of coins for another set of coins, and nobody's going to get hurt. Do you want to see something? What is it? Our ticket to Spain, Angel, the Costa del Sol. you do about it. It's how we feel about each other that counts. And having the money to do whatever we want to do together and go wherever we want to go. You really do mean it, don't you? What you said. Maybe. And the last thing in the world I wanted to do the day I found you was to make a delivery to that mausoleum. Bang, there you were. You're the best trip I've ever had. And Mr. James, Will you should... you stop worrying about that old man? He owns half of Knob Hill. And you're not going to miss what's in that case. You told me this morning it was worth about half a million dollars. Angel, you've seen it sitting there yourself. Now, what good is it doing anybody? It's not like robbing a bank or someone's business. 
Hey, I've watched people like that all my life. I watched while my father pandered to them. I swept up a crummy shop while they walked out with more than he made all year, sealed in one lousy little bit of plastic. What do they do with it? Take it home and put it in a glass case. Well, fine. Let John R. James sit and stare at his eagles. I want to see the world. Homicide, no question. There wasn't a trace of smoke in the victim's lungs. Well, that means the victim was dead before the fire started, eh? Yeah. Couldn't be a stroke or a heart attack. Not from my findings. Considering there were no breaks, welts, or contusions on the body, I'd make it suffocation. Suffocation, huh? This envelope shows there was a struggle. Bits of human flesh and hair from under the victim's fingernails. Let's get it under the microscope. There's uh, no chance of making an ID on the victim, huh? Sorry. Later, okay? Thanks, yeah. Harry. Buddy boy. What does a short barrel 32 with the serial numbers filed off say to you? Pro, I start us maybe. And one planchette out of a satchel full, ripped off by whoever killed him? Well, a couple hundred be worth ten, maybe fifteen thousand, but you'd have to have the right contacts to unload them. Wouldn't be worth all that time and trouble, though, would it? No. What about the night clerk? Oh, no, nickels and dimes. This one's got to be worth more than nickels and dimes. Yeah, Tommy, here's $15,000. If it were good, but it's not. I blew that one. You see those scratches? Those little things? Those little things are called cast marks. When they're that bad, it could tell an expert that it's a phony real fast. Speaking of scratches, how about those that Ernie laid on you? They're okay. I guess they found me by now. Relax. They'll never be able to tell what they found. That's a strand of blonde human hair. It came from the same place the coroner found those flecks of skin on slide number two. Is it body, hair, or face? Body, and probably his arms. And he's between the age of 20 and 40, definitely male and Caucasian. Well, that lets you and me out, Charlie. How about you, buddy boy? You willing to roll up your sleeves? Want to try to raise a few numbers? Chicken, huh? <laughs> Charlie. Mm -hmm. What do you got on this third slide? Shards of rusted metal. I found them embedded in the soles of the victim's shoes. Any guesses? Well, I have a better picture when I finish evaporating the solution. We wash what was left of the victim's clothing and shoes. That's what we got. A rust powder in solution. An electromagnet. You want to know something? What? I've been here for 25 years. I've never seen this thing work. A well, serial number stamped in metal can be filed off. It can never be completely destroyed. Yeah, I know that. The molecular structure of the metal retains a ghost of the stamped number. Let's see it work. Right. Serial number H12987. All PG's urgent. I'm on my way. What do you know? It really works, huh? Mm -hmm. Now you see it. Now you don't. Magic, eh? Well, maybe we'll get something after all. Say, where's that, um, oh, the latent print kit? Right oh. <laughs> You're gonna need a ten-point match for positive ID. You really think there's a chance? Charlie, I'm gonna let you in a little secret. I always think there's a chance. <laughs> Good. 
Finished? Uh, it's for a while. My eyes get tired. How much longer? A few more tonight, a few more in the morning. Vince, who are you calling? Karen. Vince? I told you it was just business. I killed a man, Vince. Now, look, that had to be done. Just like my seeing Karen. Now, it won't be long now. Go inside and get some more glassing cases and we'll seal these up. Go ahead. finished in the morning. Tomorrow? I'll tell you what time. Well, I gotta go now. Love you, baby. I love you, too. I... Well, 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 what? Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, magnesium bromide. Well, thank you, Dr. Einstein. Well, the primary salt's in seawater. From the victim's clothes. The residue evaporated from the solution we got when we washed them. Well, this came from the shoes. It's a lead compound identical to what they use in marine paint. A ship. Just offered, too, if he hadn't changed his clothes. Everybody wants to be a detective. San Diego made the serial numbers in the 32. Stolen three weeks ago in National City. Prince taken to the scene of theft identified as Ernie Walker, a.k.a. Ernie Willard. Priors all for robbery, huh? I'm on Walker's jacket. I want his mug shots, I want his prints, I want everything I want him right now. I've already asked for it. It's on its way. Good. Well... We may have our dead man. Now we got to find the man who killed him. They're pretty, aren't they? You see that one on the bottom? The fourth from the right? Yeah. What's the date? 1907. Uh-huh. Does that look any different from the rest? They all look the same to me. Well, that one's worth $22,500, Tommy. Real rare piece of change. We're going to be rich, huh, Vince? Yeah. Vince? The insulin. How many units was that? Um, how many units? About 80, I think. Maybe a little more. No, it's supposed to be 40. Right. Yes, that's too much. Vance? Vance? Sorry, Tommy. Just business. Most beautiful in the morning, coming awake, alive. Oh, oh don't do that. It's taken nearly ten years to perfect this hybrid. I'm sorry. It's all right. You couldn't have known. I believe if 
I cross this with that dark red over there, I'll have the most beautiful rose ever created. A deep, deep red with just a tinge of yellow in the throat, the look of velvet. A true queen, like no other on earth ever before her. <laughs> I, I must sound like a jelly-minded old fool. <laughs> no, no, not at all. They mean even more to you than the eagles, don't they? Well, the eagles belong to someone else now. These will always be mine. What do you mean? Nothing. I always eat too much. Yeah. Yo, yeah, how much do I owe you? Forget it. What do you mean, forget it? Somebody give you a raise in salary that I didn't you offer? Forget it. You don't owe me anything. OK, thanks, big shot. <laughs> you like talking, or you still think? Oh, I'm sorry, buddy boy. You know that partial that we lifted from the 32? That proves that this walker is the guy that we pried from that hotel room, right? Right. He did two years in Nevada for grand theft, completed his parole right here in this city. His last address was San, San Diego. Diego. Right. Yeah. Well, is that all supposed to add up to something? Just that he's a thief who lived here. The last time he was known to be alive was in San Diego, which is as close to Mexico as you can get. Mexico? Mm-hmm. And that's a big, big gold producer, right? Skipped across the border, picked up a satchel full of these, surfaced here. And he was on a ship. We didn't buy a ticket. Stowed away on a freighter. A bribe, a nice, cozy berth in steerage. <laughs> you know, it's true. What is? What you always say. You work long enough as a cop, you start thinking like a crook. Then you must know what else I'm thinking, huh, buddy boy? A counterfeit operation. That's right. But if you're dealing in counterfeit coins, especially gold coins, it's a very special market. A collector's market. Right, and those guys can tell a phony. Or buy from a dealer who can. Yeah. We're going to need an expert. I'll tell you what, I'll call a numismatic society and get us one. The what? The numismatic society. Numis... I know. I know. Coin collectors. Very good. <laughs> I worked a few crossword puzzles myself, you know, buddy boy. <laughs> Unit 8-1. Unit 8-1. 902 to crime lab. Unit 8 1, 10 4. What have you got? Mm, I thought you might want to look at these. Who is it? Harris and I are working on it now. Body washed up by Hunter's Point this morning, probably in a bay all night. Johnson saw the pictures, thought of my tie. Blonde. Oh, age is what, between 20 and 30? This our killer? I've got a workup in progress now. You got any ID? Negative. Even the labels were stripped from the clothing. What killed him? The coroner says an insulin OD. Did you get a set of prints? In the works. Well, let me know when you get a make. Right. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, uh, maybe you're in the wrong department after all. to me. I know how you feel, but there's nothing to worry about. Nothing can go wrong, and no one will be hurt if you do as I told you. Vince, please, do you have to do it? Yes, we have to do it. You and I together, and then we can be together always in style the way we planned. Look, I don't care about the money, all right? All I want is... Well, I do care about money, Karen. I care very much. I care enough to have this whole thing set up right now, and I'm counting on you. You have that case open. 
I'll be there at night. Yes. Yes, yes, this is a copians. Well, I suppose so, but can I ask what this is about? Okay, um... Uh, okay, I'll be there shortly. And the basic design was changed twice after 1849. These changes were made oh, in 1866 and 1907. Between 1907 right. and 1933, 57 issues were minted. Terrific. Wonderful. Only 206 possibilities. 206, huh? You know, if I was going to counterfeit coins, I'd go for the rarest issues. Now, here's one. 1907. Check that out. $22,000? $22,500, and that was 11 years ago. For one coin, I gotta get into this. It's That's another so world. <laughs> yeah. Yes, come in. Lieutenant Stone? Yeah, what can we do for you? Well, I believe it's the other way around. You telephoned me for some kind of assistance. I'm Vincent Hagopi. Oh, excuse me, I called you. I'm Inspector Keller. How do you do? This is Lieutenant Stone. Lieutenant. Yes, how do you do? Well, hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Not at all. We appreciate your coming. Why don't you sit down? You want some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Ah. I was told your shop deals with a lot of collectors of a double eagle. Well, yes, we dealt quite a lot with them in the past, but not so much anymore. They've got too expensive. Yeah, yeah we were just looking at some of these prices. Incredible. <laughs> so one coin here, 22500 May I see it? Sure. Oh, yes, San Godin's type. It's extra high relief. It's sold for 22500 in Chicago, 1963, I believe. But I take it you gentlemen have some special interest in eagles. Well, we have reason to believe that we're looking for a counterfeiter. Counterfeit eagles? Well, that sounds like a very complicated operation for a very limited market. I mean, I don't see how anyone could expect to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Well, that's why we wanted to talk to you. You see, we'd uh, like to have a list of names of all the collectors in the city. Yes, sir. It'll take a little while. Well, we think the counterfeiter has about a hundred of those planchettes, and he's had them for about... Uh... 36 hours. Now, would it be possible for him to have stamped all the coins by now? Yes, I suppose so, provided he had the uh, die and the press already available. Well, that could mean he's ready to make his move. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Uh, what exactly did you mean by his move? Well, you just said that it would be almost impossible to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Yes. Yeah. But how many collectors stop to look for minor imperfections once they've owned that rare coin for several years? I see. You mean a switch. Transferring the, uh, the counterfeit coins for the authenticated ones, and then selling those somewhere else where there's no risk of detection. Sounds possible to me. How about you? <laughs> Sounds ingenious. And terribly important for someone in my field to help you to stop. Uh, but, Lieutenant, you'd want more than the uh, names of collectors. You'd want a list of all the issues that would be uh, most likely passed. You see, they'd have to be either proof or uncirculated to command any kind of price. Well, what about this, uh... 1907 coin, for example. Oh, no, I'd rule that out. That's too rare. Well, can you give us issues that you can't rule out? Yes. Be quite a lot. And about the uh, collectors, I'd have to check my records in my shop to compile that list. Well, we'd appreciate anything you gave us, Mr. Hagopian. Would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Good day. This could take us two days just to put the right coins with the collectors that Gopian gave us. Yeah, he helped a lot. Yeah. Hmm. What do you know? What? Remember that coin that Gopian said was too rare, the one that went for 22 G's? Yep. Take a look who bought it. John R. James, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And if he owns that one, he owns others. Well, I remember his name on that list. Because it's not on there. Well, how could he forget a name like that? 
You know, I think that's worth asking Mr. Hagopian himself. a duty as I have burdened you with over the months, it seems. Go ahead. You said this morning that um, these don't belong to you anymore. Have you agreed to sell them to someone? What I said this morning is not for publication. What I'm going to tell you now is. This coin was minted in 1907. It's the most expensive double eagle ever on the market. I paid an exorbitant price, I know, but it had a sentimental value. You see, my Uncle Henry actually started this collection for me with an identical coin on my seventh birthday. You began collecting these when you were seven years old? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. I sold it to buy a train ticket. This was my start, you might say, and when I made it in the world, I determined to buy it back again someday. Well, why the rest? I became enamored of these in my search for this. For instance... Mr. James, I'd much rather think of you with the roses than with all of these. <laughs> Lock it out. This may become a mellow evening after all. <laughs> All set? Yes. Let's break out the brandy. Whether or not we ever finish that book I brought you here to write. I've enjoyed your company, Karen. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for being more than just somebody an old man can babble on to about his yesterdays. And for being someone who understands just why and how he spent them the way he did. I think you probably understand everything about me except my eagles, even after hearing how I came to collect them. Well, it isn't important that I understand that. Well, it isn't important I keep the future from you either, provided it remains off the record. Of course. I've said they already belong to someone else. That's true. A trust owns them all, has for several years. When I die, they'll be sold at auction. The proceeds will go to the English department at the university. That's how we met, actually. Dean Robertson told me I wouldn't be disappointed in you in any respect. That's proved to be true, too. I'm glad you feel that way. Remember this morning when I told you the roses were different? They had always belonged to me. Yes. Well, that was some sort of a fantasy, I suppose, an old man's idea of immortality. I could see my creation, my queen rose, carrying on my name long after I was gone. They deserve something much better. They deserve to be named after a beautiful woman. I'd like very much to name that rose after you, with your permission. What do you say? Shall it be Queen Karen?
Good evening. Police. We're sorry to be intruding, but we'd like to speak to Mr. James, please. Mr. James, isn't to be disturbed. Isabel. What is it? Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. We're with Homicide. We'd like to talk to you about your collection of double eagles. I failed to make any connection between my eagles and Homicide. Well, if you gave us a few moments, I'm sure we could make that connection for you. Very well. This way, gentlemen. There they are. Now, that's all of them, right? Yes, Inspector, that is all of them. Forty, to be exact, with an average value of over $12,000. Mr. James, did you know a dealer in this city by the name of Vincent Hagopian? Very well. I used to deal with him exclusively before he died. Died? About a year and a half ago. Well, we just talked to him this afternoon. His son had to be his son. Would be. He took over the business, but he's not the expert his father was. He hasn't the same love for it. He didn't mention that either. Maybe we ought to find out what else he forgot to mention. Say, may I use your phone? Certainly. Thank you. You still haven't explained why you're here. We're looking for counterfeits, Mr. James. <laughs> Counterfeit eagles here? Impossible. Who has access to your case? There's only one key. I keep it with me at all times. May I? Stone. Let me talk to Lessing. Lessing Stone. I want to make on Vincent Hagopian, Jr. He owns a coin shop on Maiden Lane. His name and address is on my desk. Go over there and pick Jimmy it up. Loves I'll hold. Desk left drawer. You got it? Go over to r and I and find out if by any chance there's a tie between this Hagopian and our other body, Ernie Walker. Body? What's he talking about? Well, we've had two killings we believe are connected with this counterfeiting. Did you get a make on that insulin OD yet? All right. Check Hagopian's neighborhood and find out if the two of them were ever seen together. Anywhere. Now, you know where to look. The bars, his coin shop, apartment. Let me know what turns up. When was the last time you opened this, sir? Less than a half an hour ago. And were you alone? No, I was with a friend, a young lady. She's my house guest. May we speak to her, please? Certainly. Thank you. Got anything? I don't know. Mr. James. This coin. It's an 83 proof. Uh, only uh, 40 in the world. Could you look at it through the glass? taken sort of a two-day crash course because of this case, but those uh, hairline scratches, I believe you experts call them cast marks, they wouldn't be on a coin in proof condition, would they? No. They weren't here when I bought this coin. You didn't buy that coin, Mr. James. Somebody just gave it to you. A gopian? I don't know. Yes, sir. Will you ask Miss Pearson to join us, please? Well, Miss Pearson just left, sir. I heard her car in the driveway. Say, this girl, does she know Hagopian? Not well. But she did know him. Yes, as a matter of fact, I introduced them myself several months ago when he came here one day to make a delivery. Have they seen each other since then? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Certainly she couldn't be involved in anything like this. She's a very simple young woman. And if I read this Hagopian right, he's no simple young man. We'll need a description of Miss Pearson, sir. What's her first name? Karen. Vince. Vince, open the door. Vince. What are you doing here? I told you to wait for me. The police came. The police? Yeah, we were wrong, but we've got to take it back. Never mind, never mind. What did they want? What did they say? I don't know. I left as soon as they came. Help me. Let me get these mails. Then stop. Look, we have to take it back, all of it. It doesn't belong to him anymore. I know it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to me, and they'll be waiting for me in Spain. Oh, please. Look, I'll make it up. We don't need this. I'll tell you what I don't need. I don't need you. 
your whining mouth or your pawing me anymore. How long do you think she'll get? Who? Who? Karen. Well, I'm a DA. She turned evidence. Identified Tom from the Gopian shop. That'll help her a little. What's this? Got your names on them. Appreciation, John R. James. Silver dollar. Where's that book? Where's the book? Yeah. What year is that? 1882. Looks pretty shiny, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Think they're uncirculated? Oh, I'd say they're uncirculated. Hey, we're rich. Yeah? Yeah. Four dollars a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 